We are back live about 15 minutes before court resumes in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. For those of you that are new here, I'm legal analyst Emily D. Baker. I am a lawyer. I give commentary on law. I, I feel like we're giving sports commentary on trial as I'm here yelling, objection! It's like, Raph! <laughs> Raph! What are you doing? Um, so... Today, we are anticipating that Johnny Depp is going to be taking the stand live. So I'm going to do our little bitty intro, and then we're going to do a recap of this morning, and we're going to cover it. Court should be done at 5 p.m. Eastern time today, so a little over four hours from now, but there's definitely going to be a break in there. There will be an afternoon break for not just the court reporter, but for the jurors as well, so they can get up and stretch. And that's it. We've got lots and lots to do. So it's good to see you back, Lonards. We do have some chat rules here if you're new. Why? Because we like to have conversation without name calling, shit talking, that sort of thing. We can have real conversations that way um, without kind of disparaging the parties. And it is going to be hard in this case. This is a very polarizing case with two parties that people have strong feelings about. People really like Johnny Depp. There's a lot of people that very much dislike Amber Heard, but our like or dislike for one or the other of the parties is almost irrelevant when it comes down to can they prove their case in front of this jury in Virginia. We will talk about likability for sure as it plays to the jury, but not so much as it plays to our own feelings. What I think is important is we remember like, hey, um, I like this side more than this side. So sometimes it's hard to wrap our mind around the other side's argument, but we will absolutely be doing that in here if Amber Heard's attorney who annoys the ever living life out of me has good moments and cross. We're going to talk about it though. There is no hiding my level of annoyance for her style of cross-examination. It is a personal preference, but also I am a trial lawyer. I did over 10 years um, in the DA's office doing trials. I have very specific preferences in how I liked to do trials. Also, I was a prosecutor. Doing that type of cross-exam style when you are the government comes across as heavy-handed and mean. And I think in this case, Amber Heard's female attorney is coming across a little heavy-handed and mean. So let's do a recap of the morning real quick. But first, we need to do the intro. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. So this morning we had the finishing up of the cross-examination of Johnny Depp's kind of head security, private security guard. He is someone clearly that has a lot of affection for Johnny Depp. And this witness built on the next witness as well. I've got notes because of course lawyers take notes. And as I'm live streaming, I can't do anything without notes. So if you hear it around here, we've got, um, we've got a whole notebook here. Second witness was Keenan Wyatt, who is a sound engineer and sound tech that worked with Johnny Depp on a lot of his movies. Both of these witnesses really were saying the same thing in different ways. They were both saying that they had not seen Johnny Depp be assaultive to Amber Heard. They've been around him a lot when he drinks his personality and behavior doesn't really change. Most of us and most jurors know someone who, when they drink their personality changes some People have had experience in their life with those who get aggressive when they drink, those who are the sad girl crying in the bathroom when they drink. That was never me. Some who think they can drop it like it's hot, like a 20-year-old when they drink. That, that's me. And it's not good. <laughs> I'm like, why am I so sore? Why do my knees hurt so badly? Oh, <laughs> because what we're not is still 20. So 
they were really hinting or not hinting at, they were testifying to establish the foundation that Johnny Depp doesn't turn into this quote unquote monster when he drinks, which is what Amber Heard's side hit on in opening statements that Johnny drinks and does drugs and the monster comes out. I've understood that the monster is how Johnny Depp referred to his own struggles with addiction colloquially. He named it. Amber Heard's team in opening statements tried to shift that to being that it's kind of this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, that he's the monster. So with that, we saw these witnesses and witness after witness that are establishing that when he drinks, he's kind of more like Jack Sparrow is what his uh, his witness the other day said. And so with all of that, we are really seeing the build up to Johnny Depp testifying this afternoon. So it was a very, very interesting day to see how hot um, Johnny Depp's witnesses were treated by Amber Heard's lawyers. Amber Heard's lawyers came in hot today and just the cross-examination was hot, fast, and furious. It's not a style of cross-exam that I like, but we can't see the jury's faces. Um, I'm going to get to this question. I think it's great. We can't see the jury's faces. We don't know how they are responding to this style, but generally when you have a very likable witness, what you don't want to do is be aggressive with them in my opinion. So with that, we are definitely seeing Amber Heard's lawyers taking the most aggressive path to get to their points. I just think that sometimes that path loses the point. We're so caught up in how aggressive it is. And this is what we were seeing with the chat with all of us. We're so caught up in how aggressive the cross is. The little moments where a point is made are almost overshadowed by the lawyer's style. That's not something that I prefer to see. I don't think it's helpful in the long term because when the attorney gets to closing and is saying, remember this happened, the jury's going to be like, I don't even remember. I just, I, you're yelling at me and it's giving me a migraine but maybe they're in for it. Maybe they like it. And we'll have to see what people that are in the courtroom observing this trial have to say as they are watching the jury's reaction to these styles of cross-examination. Now, of course, we haven't seen Depp's team's style of cross-examination, and we won't until later in this trial. And I might have the same criticism for them. What I will say is some of the attorneys on Depp's team do get thrown off their game with objections, and this judge has been fairly lenient on objections, being like, I'll allow it, just let it in. And so much of this trial is controlled because all of these witnesses did depositions. These lawyers aren't putting up a witness going, I wonder what they're going to say. They know exactly what they're going to say. And when the defense comes up and is like, but in your deposition, didn't you say this? They know generally what these witnesses are going to say. It's how they're going to say it and how they respond. The only real space that there is for these witnesses to kind of go off script from where they went in the deposition is if the defense opens the door for that. And we absolutely saw that happen with Isaac, um, one of Johnny Depp's friends, who when the door was opened about was he mad or not, he was like, I'm sad. I want them to heal. And what she did is wrong. What she did is awful. The lies. And he went on in a very emotional and what felt to me to be a very true and credible statement. And the the female attorney, Bredhoft or whatever her name is, was just like, I didn't open the door for that. It's like, oh, but you sure fucking did. You sure did. You came in like a wrecking ball with these questions and opened the door with these open-ended questions. A, a leading question on direct is the type of question you're going to ask on cross. You said this. Yes, no. You said that. Yes, no. So it's a very narrowly tailored cross to get in and get out. The leading questions aren't allowed unless they're foundational on direct. And when they're foundational, you really want to be like, were you here on this date and time? Yes, it can be leading, but it cuts down a lot of time. It's like, so in April, 2016, did you do some shit? That's, that's so annoying. <laughs> like that's so, so annoying. That's absolutely what you don't want. So with that, I'm going to get to a few super chats and then we're going to uh, wait for court to resume. The feeds should be resuming in court in just a few minutes. You guys are great. Thank you, Law Nerds. We're at over 4,000. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Share this with somebody if you want to. Um, 
So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Kristen Berry, I hope this is because you would just like to make a wig from it. I'm going with that. But yes, my hairstylist has been amazing and has helped me keep my hair healthy while being very colorful. I, I definitely am like in my kind of, you know, color bright and sparkly era. What era are we in? It's not super pastel -y. I don't know. I might be in my reputation era. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> People can keep coming for me and then we'll see. We'll see where it lands. Oh, it is a joke. Also, I've got my Invisalign in this afternoon. Yes, one of my teeth, it, it rotated back. So sometimes I have them in when I'm live. Sometimes I don't. I know they're noticeable. I it, Sometimes it makes my S's a little sharp. So apologies for that. Question, what's the most surprising thing about this trial so far? Thanks for the content you rock. Well, thank you. The most surprising thing is that I did a TikTok about this trial that's like almost at 800,000 views. No, I'm teasing. That's all about me. It's about me me. The most surprising thing is how absolutely dry the video depositions come across. No, I could have predicted that. I think Isaac was a pleasant surprise. Um, he had that moment of being emotional. Again, these trials are so scripted, but really, um, Gina Deuters being yeeted mid testimony for watching other testimony is truly the most surprising part of this. That's something that in a trial with this much money behind it and millions of dollars in legal fees and years of preparation and a witness that was very favorable to Johnny Depp called for his side because these witnesses are supposed to be called for their side. They're going to be biased towards the person they're testifying for. That's why they're called. They're called to support that person's side. Um, it's very surprising to me that we then have that person being asked if they had watched any of the coverage and saying, yes, they had shocking shit in a trial where, you know, the attorneys said you can't watch any of this coverage. So that was really surprising to me. And then all the nonsense with Eve Barlow was kind of a bit of a sideshow, but I was very entertained. I love a good sideshow. I'm not the attorney running this trial. If I was one of the attorneys running this trial, that would all stress me out very much, but I'm not, we're just watching it going, Oh, you're not part of the legal team and you're back there texting and the court's like the fuck you are the fuck you are testing in my courtroom. Hell no. Also, for those of you that are new to my streams, I curse. <laughs> Welcome. I said it in the intro. I use cursey words. If you are new to my stream, go ahead and pop a one in the chat. The mods and I would love to welcome you in and say hello. It's so good to see you. Pawner tip because my partner keeps walking on you. Hi, you're welcome to walk on me. Mine keeps walking on my keyboard. It looks like we are back. Neither of the streams I'm watching have come back. So let us um, pull. There's one other stream I'm going to pull into first and then I'm going to find a different stream. So let's go ahead and share screen. The judge is on the bench and we are just going to do that. So this is another YouTube feed and I'm going to see what the judge says and then I'm going to try to find my other streams and see if they resume. So the only reason I'm not going to keep using this stream is because I don't want somebody to be like, oh, the justice for Johnny, we've got one side. We're here to watch the trial. Since I have so many attorneys, might someone else cross? No. Uh, well, yes. We'll see who's objecting. Once we see who's objecting, we will know who's doing the cross. Only one attorney. You can't like tag team witnesses. So one attorney per witness. So whoever we hear doing the objections is who is going to be doing the cross. I imagine it'll be Brett Hoff because she is the lead counsel, it seems in this case, but maybe not. This woman could trigger him and he might want to leave if she's aggressive which might be a strategy of theirs. They want to make him uncomfortable because they want to make it seem like, you know, if somebody's uncomfortable on the stand, jurors can read that as being um, not truthful. Right. And that might be a goal. I hope I, lunch went okay. So, <laughs> All right, good. Lunch went okay. All it was right. great. How was your next lunch? witness? Next witness. Your Honor, we call Mr. John C. Depp. All right. There it is. It is. Ha it's, it's all happening. It's all happening. We thought this was happening. Court TV verified this was happening. And he's being sworn in. All right, let's try to find one of the other streams so we get both romance between their characters. No. She has a particular. Can you catch up, Court TV? Can you? Sky News isn't on it yet either. All right. This is where we're at for now. I will find another one in a minute. All right, yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Depp. I don't want to miss any Good of this. Afternoon. Can you please tell the jury why you're here today? Because I sued Amber Heard. Um, yes. Um, about six years ago, um, uh, Ms. Heard made uh, 
some quite heinous and um, uh, disturbing, uh, brought these disturbing criminal um, Don't speculate. Acts, um, against uh, me that uh, that were not based in any species of truth. Um, it was a, it was a complete shock uh, that it would it it just didn't need to go in that direction um, as. Nothing, nothing of the kind had ever happened, though it, it, the relationship, um, there were um, arguments. She needed to narrowly tailor and, this a bit more for him. Um, things of that nature, but never did I myself r reach the point of um, uh, striking misheard in any way, nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman um, in my life. And so I, at the time, because the news of this, her accusations had uh, sort of permeated the industry and then made its way through media and social media, became quite a global um, um, let's say quote unquote fact, if you will. And since I knew that there was no truth to it whatsoever, I felt it my responsibility to uh, to stand up, not only for myself um, in that instance, but stand up for my children, who at the time were uh, f 14 and 16. And so they were in high school. And uh, I, I thought it was diabolical that my children would have to go to um, school and have their friends or people in the school approach them with the infamous People magazine cover with uh, uh, Miss Heard with a, a dark bruise on her face. Um, and then it just kept um, the, it's good that he called her Miss Heard. It, it kept multiplying. It, 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 it just kept getting bigger he and bigger. Seem angry. He so it was nervous. my responsibility, I felt, to not only attempt to clear my name um, for the sake of, well, for many reasons, but I'm waiting for I the defense to, to object to narrative. Uh, my children, I feel it coming. Of, of this horrid thing that they were having to read about their father that was, which was untrue. And also after many years of being in this um, industry, um, I, at the time it was probably, I'd probably been in the industry 30 plus years, 35 years. Um, never had had any problems, anything like that. And I had met many people over, over the years, many, Many of the people. This is starting to actually had become narrative, but it's probably the that they're not objecting. to talk to those people and to um, g even give advice to these people, and I'm, I'm not. Um, my goal is the truth. My goal is the truth. Absolutely, because that is a chat rule. It, it, it he killed seems very me nervous. that people that I had spoken with, that I had met with over the years, who I, who maybe were in a not such a great position and they needed advice, and I gave them the best advice I could, um, 
all I could think of was that those people would 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 think that I um, was a fraud and that I had lied to them. And this is the heart of defamation. So I Damaged had to reputation. wait for my opportunity to um, address the charges, which were criminal Switching. charges. It, it killed me uh, that please. people that I had spoken with, I that say I had Amber met Heard. with over there the years, who I that's what I wanted to say, who maybe were in a not such a great position and they needed advice. All right, we're a second behind, but. The best advice I could. I want to see heard while he um, testifies. All I could think of Thank was you, that TV. those people would 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 think that I um, was a fraud and that I had lied to them. And you guys are and talking about his cadence. He seems so. I had to scared. wait for my opportunity to um, address the charges, which were criminal charges um and 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 they, and they just weren't um true so I, I felt the responsibility of clearing the record as um the only the only way that i could get that i could get the that I to could the speak. point where i could speak um has really taken this full six years and it's been six years of trying times it's very strange when one day you're uh, Cinderella so to speak and then in 0 0.6 seconds you're Quasimodo that's and, the heart um, of defamation I, that your reputation's destroyed I I I didn't uh, deserve that, nor did my children, nor did the people who have believed in me for all these years. I, I didn't want anybody, any of those people to believe that I had done them wrong or lied to them or that I was a fraud. I think that's really I, fair. I, I'm, I pride myself on honesty. I pride myself on truth. Truth is the only thing I'm interested in. Uh, there the defense could object to lies narrative. Lies will get you nowhere, but... It's um, wise that they don't. Lies build upon lies and build upon lies. It's and too much to here. cover. I, I, I'm obsessed with the truth. And um, so today is my... That's not a great... Actually, my, the first uh, opportunity that I've been able to speak about this... Um, case uh, in full for the for the first time. They're trying to paint him as an obsessed ex-husband. Mr. This Depp, might be how do you feel about the intimate to, details of your life being aired in this process? I'm obsessed with the truth. I'm not obsessed with this, but I'm obsessed with clearing my name. It might actually be um, a good switch. I, I reverse myself on saying that wasn't a good father, word. Um, raising kids, you know, when they were very, very little, um, it was important to me very important to me to to try to shield my children as much as possible from i agree that he sounds hurt um looking at their father uh or their or their mom for that matter uh, as uh, uh, novelties I, I didn't want my children to experience um hordes of paparazzis um, so I was always a very private person. Um, so for me to come up here and stand before you or sit before you all, um, and no. spill the truth, um, His kids is quite exposing. Vanessa Paradis. And, um. It's Very unfortunate that, that it's not only exposing for myself, it's exposing for my family, it's exposing for Miss Heard, it's exposing for, it's, um, it, it never had to go 
in this direction. And so I, I can't say that I'm embarrassed because I know that I'm doing the right thing. <clears throat> I think that's very fair. Now, Mr. Depp, um, I'd like to turn a bit to your upbringing. Um, we heard a bit from your sister, Christy, last week. But can you please tell the jury in your own words about your, your childhood upbringing? Um, I had a very... Hard to talk about, but he's looking at the jury, which is good. childhood. Um, one that I thought was normal until a certain age. My mother... Um, I was born in Kentucky, and um, then we moved, in which we moved around quite a lot um, when I was a kid. So you were always just, my mom had this, uh, her feet were on fire and she had to move, you know, so we moved constantly. So you were always the new kid, and that wasn't ever particularly pleasant. Then we moved to Florida. South Florida when I was about seven or eight. Um, and again, moved several, several times. But um, my mother was quite unpredictable. She was very unpredictable. Um, she was a... She had the ability to be as as cruel as anyone can be um, with all of us. Uh, that is to say, my sister Christy and my my brother Danny and my sister Debbie, and um, also my father. <clears throat> so. Um, essentially. Um, she was, uh, she could become quite violent and she was quite violent and she was quite cruel and she, and though there was physical abuse, certainly, um, which could uh, be in the form of, uh, as rehearsed, an ashtray being flung him. at you, you know, it, hit you in the head or you'd get beat with a high heel shoe or, or a telephone or whatever's handy. Um, so in our house, there was no, we were never exposed to any type of safety um, or security. The, the, um, the only thing that one could do, really, um, was to try to stay out of the line of fire. You, um, I started to He's doing a good job at looking at the jury. Um, be able to observe um, and explaining. I could see. I could start to see when she was about to head head into a. Uh, head into a, a situation where she was going to get riled up and somebody was going to get it. Um, generally, uh, it was me. Mr. Depp, you mentioned that your mother could be cruel. How could she be cruel? Um, the, well, the various categories, I suppose, are... There are, there's, there's physical violence, of course, there's physical abuse, um, to which she was, um, that was a constant. That was just a constant. I like that they you know. picked Miss Vasquez we were all to do the direct examination shot, of him. You know, even if she just walked past, she, you, they're you showing him how to yourself a because you didn't know what was going to Very happen. vulnerable interaction with his female Excuse attorney, and, which is um, important. So there was there was the physical abuse, which was was a, a constant. Um, there was uh, quite a lot of verbal abuse. There was quite a lot of name calling and um, bullying. You know, m making fun of making fun of whatever defect 
you know, one might have, you know, if my brother wore glasses. So, of course, he was four eyes or, and he had his and teeth you guys were remember messed up in the front. So how you're feeling? Tooth as well. Um, People on the jury um, are going to connect with that because they're Christy, seeing it from a few feet away. They're going to feel him. Which this is such a... So if you can feel him through the screen, psychological they are going play. to feel my 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 father's uh, parents were quite refined. My mother comes from Eastern Kentucky, which is is uh, where you grow up in shacks and hol and hollers. You, you know, Jennifer, I don't and, think this uh, will be done today. I think he might go all of today and at least my, well my, into tomorrow. My mother despised uh, my father's parents, and my grandmother's name was Violet. And every now and again, you would hear my mother just scream across the house. Come here, Violet. Get in here, Violet. I might switch and to another feed. They are Christy, getting annoying. My sister knew very well that that was a, a deep, a deep cut psychologically, emotionally. But we had to take it. I mean, you, you just had to take the pain. Um, I, I was born with a very strange, it was a very rare uh, thing in my eye as the, the, the back of the huh. lens is spherical. Uh, normally, um, is spherical. So in this eye, it isn't normal. This eye, I was born um, with a more conical uh, lens, so uh, my brain never learned to see out of my left eye. And they noticed when I was about uh, three, four, five, three, four, that I had a, a lazy eye, a wandering eye, and um, um, she would call me. <laughs> she would call me cockeye. One eye, um, any anything, anything she could get to to uh, uh, demean, humiliate. Um, uh, I even had to wear um, I had to wear an eye patch on my good eye uh, yep. to strengthen my my bad eye so that it would cease to wander. It was a mus It was exercising the muscles of the eye. Though the brain had never learned to see, so I still, uh, my vision in my left eye is, uh, I'm legally blind in my left eye. But, I um, did not. So, yeah, the, the, the verbal abuse, the psychological abuse was, uh, was almost worse than the, than the, than the, than the, the and you guys, I know this is going to be very triggering for a lot of you. Physical pain. This is going to get to why he the acts pain, the way he acts with Amber Heard, or why with, he doesn't. You learn to accept it. You learn to the way he doesn't act. Deal with it. Um, but the, uh, the psychological and emotional abuse. That's what. Uh, that's what kind of tore us up. I think. What about your father? What was he like? My father, my father was a very kind man. Uh, in fact, my father's still alive. He's he's a very kind man. Um, he's, he's a very quiet man. Um, in fact, he's very shy. Um, no, not a but it's a civil case, so uh, person in any motivation way. does matter. And when Betty Sue, mother. Um, would go off on 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 a tangent uh, toward my my father, um, and 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 of course in front of the kids it was no matter to her. Uh, he would he would um, he, he amazingly remained very very stoic and uh, never. As she was rationing him with horrible um, things, 
he stood there and just looked at her while she delivered the pain and he swallowed it. He took it. Um, there was never one moment, never a moment when my father um, lost control and attacked my mother or hit my mother or even said, he even said a bad thing to my mother. What, what I, the things that I witnessed were, there were a couple of times when it got too far that I, I would see his, I could see his eyes welling up as he was staring at her saying nothing. Um, and then the most that he would do is he would, he would, he would punch a, a, a wall. I, I once saw him punch a wall, and um, and that correlates to other shattered incidents. Shattered his hand because it wasn't it wasn't drywall; it was um, proper concrete and uh, steel wire and rebar. It's interesting that Hurd is things of that nature and uh, towards depth to watch him, but um, she's but also still never never touched her full face to the jury. Never um, argued with her. So she has he, uh, to control he, her face. He, he remained a gentleman. And to her hair me, is back as a five-year-old boy, I kept thinking to myself, I kept wondering why, why does he take it? How does he, how does he take this? And, 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 and why doesn't he leave her? Um, but he didn't, you know, um, He was able to maintain his calm and his composure. He was able to maintain uh, his relationship with his children. Um, he was uh, he was he was a good man. He is a good man. You mentioned that you saw your father punch a wall. How many times did you witness that? I mean, I, I, out of out of, All right. I couldn't count Mr. the amount of fights that they had, but I, I, I know that I, I've, I've seen my father strike uh, a wall um, two. All right, we're switching feeds real quick, just so we don't have all the distraction. And, uh, and this is a much cleaner audio feed. Thanks Reuters. I'll never forget the, uh, this if we need to go back, white, I'll switch back. Thick leather, 1970s era. Thick leather, white belt that he would um, take off. And and, um, and then he would uh, commence to uh, inflict the punishment uh, on, on me. Um, but interestingly, there was, there was one time Oop, when sorry. my father... I, I kept telling him I, I didn't do this. It was another incident. I, I kept swearing to him that I, I did not do what that he sued my, what my mom had said that I'd done. But he went through with the punishment anyway. <clears throat> and then uh, not long after, he found out that I had been telling the truth and that I hadn't done what uh, I, what my mom had said that I'd done, um, and he he came to me and uh, apologized to me for um, for having gone through with the whipping, you know, the belt. And um, I have to say, um, my mom never did that; she couldn't. She, she knew what she knew. She was raised how she was raised. And um, I had no power to change what was inside of her, you know. How did your parents' relationship ultimately come to an end to your understanding? Um, when my father left, I, I didn't realize that he had left. He left to her. I, I was 15. I'd, I had already... Uh, left school 
when I was a musician, I was playing in clubs and such. And uh, he, he left for work one morning, just like every day, and was packing his car, and then he left. And then hours later, uh, my mom, Betty Sue, came home from work. It was about 3.30 in the afternoon. And she walked in the door and stopped and, and just looked around like she felt something. And she just, I said, what's wrong? She said, your daddy's gone. I said, well, yeah, I seen him leave for work this morning. She said, no, 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 he's gone, he's gone. And she ran into, the, uh, into their bedroom and into their closet. And I followed her and I, she opened the door and there was one, yeah, his side, his rack of clothing and all his belongings were gone. And she was quite upset. And I took her car and drove to my father's work. And I sat down in front of him at 15 and I said, listen, seems as though somebody stole all your clothes out of the closet. And, um, and he said, uh, he said, yeah, yeah. He said, I, I'm done. I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't, I can't. He's doing a good job at looking to the jury, the the but not now. staring them down as he tells and, about his uh, childhood. Those words didn't, didn't quite sit well with me. I, 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 I didn't imagine. feel like I was ready to hear those words, but that's what I got. Um, then my mom got very, went into a very, very dark uh, place, a very deep, dark depression, as you can imagine. And, um, and uh, she, one afternoon I woke up, I'd, I'd fallen asleep, and I woke up and walked out into the living room and I saw my my mother, um, like uh, very feebly, um, and like almost it was like a slow motion crawl. It, it, if I could stand up, I could show you just the what I saw. Do you mind? Do you no, mind? You can stand up. Thank you. So. Part of establishing this I is going to be his memory of traumatic events. My, my mother. And some of this is going to go to his behavior later. You know, in that. Also. In that mode. I don't love seeing so him act things out because he's reminding I the jury that, that he was dreadfully is wrong. an actor. And um, there's drool coming out of her mouth. And as I was about to run and call. The front door busted open, and uh, my uncle and uh, two paramedics came in and um, threw on the gurney and whisked her out of the house to get her to the hospital to um, to pump her stomach. And she'd uh, she had uh, swallowed uh, a multitude of of pills to 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 try to take herself out tried to commit suicide and uh when she got out of the hospital she was a small firecracker of a woman she was about five foot two but when she got out of the hospital the depression was so deep she she was down to like she lived on the couch and she weighed about 70 pounds and that, all that imagery spun into my head at that time that I thought that was a very, in my head at the time, I thought that that was a cowardly way for my father to have left. And I, I, I think I a lot of people uh, probably agree with him. Deeply upset by that. Raven, I agree um, with you. I'm pointing out the pros and cons of his testimony, the way a jury might see it. My father and I had Juries a conversation. Juries can be very skeptical. Um, years later. Especially when people where act. I asked him. So I appreciate what that. What really 
happened? What, how did it happen when I was older? And he told me the story. I agree with you. Now they're objecting to narrative. They're objecting to narrative, but they're trying not to be dicks about it because this is a very, um, it is a very sensitive story. It is very emotionally enthralling. So he's being allowed to continue, but I don't hear it on that feed. Okay. So it is a very emotional story and that's why they're approaching. I'm trying to see if we have any of oh, sky news is just not back I'm trying to see if we have any, um, feed of the lawyers talking. I think they are objecting to narrative because you do have to ask questions. You can't just be like, so tell me what happened and let somebody keep going. But he is, um, he is retelling all of this and this is being asked about because it informs why he feels so strongly, not only about the way he's saying he was defamed, but about the fact that he would never hit somebody and never hit a woman and that this all plays into why it matters and they're going to challenge his memory, but he's showing how much he remembers these very strong and traumatic events and can retell these events. And that's going to also trigger his memory when it comes Mr. to Jeff, how did you feel confrontational events with Amber, asked? how he feels about his father. I'm not sure how that is quite relevant. He already said he was angry would, and he thought it was cowardly. I was, I was, I was very disappointed in him because I started to believe that his exit was, was sneaky, cowardly. They left him with someone who he was abusive. When he said goodbye to me, when he left for work that morning, he said goodbye, you know, goodbye, Bob. And I went, see you later, right. Pop. That was it. Until... Um, I learned the truth from uh, from him. And without getting into what your father told you, why is how how has your um, impression of your father changed now? And I don't know how this section relevance. Yes, is relevant. Your Honor, this is just an understanding of his perception of his family. Why does it matter? I'll sustain the objection. Next yeah. Question. Why is it relevant? How he perceives his dad. So. Mr. Depp, what have you learned from um, your experience in your childhood and observing your father in your childhood? That's relevant. I learned that I was wrong about my first impressions of his, his exit from the family. Um, very wrong. And... Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing that I learned that was that was uh, one of the best lessons I believe I've ever learned in my life, ever could learn in your life, in my life, was um, based on my experiences as, as a child and what I'd seen and experienced. I knew exactly how to raise children um, when, when, uh, when my girl, Vanessa, got pregnant. Um, I knew exactly how to raise children, which was to do the opposite. It's like what we're going to do is not any of that. What Betty Sue did. And we're not doing any of that. Never raise your voice in front of the children, never. Um, screaming out the word no to them. I never wanted to tell my kids no. I, I, I wanted to tell them that. I wanted to show them that there were options. You don't have to stick the coat hanger in the electrical socket. You know, saying no is an abrupt thing, but to talk to them and say, if you understand the repercussions of something, then you won't go there. So if maybe you understand think about that you'll hurt yourself, this as opposed to this, give this some thought, you know, but that will clearly, um, that could kill you. So I, I would ease them away from, um, things of that nature with a more, more of an, 
more of a conversation as opposed to a a a you know a flat out don't you ever do that again and threats and things of that nature i i did not raise my children that way he wants to talk it out which is consistent with what their therapist said we never raised our voices in front of our children ever how do you think your experiences with your parents in your childhood affected your approach to your relationship with miss hurd i'm sorry um this is important. One more time. We're switching one more. How did your experiences observing your parents as a child because affect your approach I want the to your captions. relationship with Miss Hurd? I've gotten very greedy. This one's a little behind. Well, in the beginning of my relationship with Miss Hurd, one more time. How did your experiences? Sorry, we were a little behind on this new feed. As a child, but I wanted the closed captions. your approach to your for when I talk over. I don't remember if Vanessa Paradis is on well, the witness list. I would imagine that she is. In the beginning of my relationship with Ms. Herod, um, there was, from what I recall and what I remember, she was, she was, um, it was as if she were, it was, she was too good to be true. Yeah, this um, is important to get back to what he loved about her. Attentive, she was loving. Um, because it doesn't all come smart, off as bitter, was which matters. Kind, she was funny, she was understanding, she. Um, and and we, we, we had many things in common, certain blues music and, well, music, literature, things of that nature. So. It, for that year or year and a half, it was uh, it was amazing. Um, Too good to be true. There were a couple of things that I don't know stuck in my head that I noticed that I thought might be a little bit of a a dilemma at some point. Oh, we saw some red flags. For example, yes. For example, I, what are I, the red flags? I, I was I worked quite a lot. And when I would come home from work, um, I would I would come in the house or the hotel, and she would sit me down on the couch and give me a glass of wine and uh, take my boots off, set them to the side, and. Um, I've never experienced anything like that in, in, in my life. I, I, I just never thought that was, I just never experienced that before. And I imagine when we get to the and experts, it became a regular thing. We will hear about why and that kind of caregiving mattered for him. Did. Uh, it was kind of routine. And I remember one night I came home from work and, uh, and I think she was on the phone or something and or busy. She was doing something and, um, so I sat down on the couch and I took my boots off and um, suddenly Miss Hurd approached with this look on her face. That this she, feels she like said, his natural cadence. What did you just do? So I'm do? not surprised. So what, what do you mean? You took your boots off. It also feels measured. And not rehearsed. Yeah, yes, I did. You, He's you, a storyteller. You, you were busy, you know. No, no, no. That's my job. That's what I do. You don't do that. I do that. Okay. All right then. There will be other experts to said, talk about their relationship dynamic. We've only but seen I some did of them. Take pause, of course. At the fact that she was visibly shaken or upset that I had uh, I had broken her rule rules of routine yep. I thought that strange and then once that the early once you red flags. something like that then you start to notice other little tidbits and things that come out and then 
and then uh, within a year, year and a half, she had become this, this another person almost. Mr. Depp, we're going to talk about Ms. Hurd in a, a couple minutes. Sure, we like will hear about her childhood about, more. Um, we heard about it in, in opening. And so, could and you please we tell will the hear more about she also had an abusive upbringing and um, she broke horses as a pastime. We will hear more about accident. that. I uh, was a musician and I'd moved out to Los Angeles with my band uh, when I was 20 years old. Um, yes, jurors can absolutely take notes. They, were, they might not covered. during this because it doesn't feel, uh, it feels like background. It feels like you're being told a story. To, so they the might band, not. Where the band split up. And uh, I remember I was filling out job applications and then Nick, uh, uh, with a friend of mine and, who happens to be. Emma, I think it's a sign Nigel, of respect. Uh, less known than. The, I also think he doesn't want to call her Cage. Amber. Because he's distancing um, and I was himself filling from out her. job applications at any you know, video stores, clothing stores, anything, and just to be able to pay the rent. And she um, asked about his acting Nick career. Cage said, uh, "You know, why, why don't you meet my agent? You know, uh, it hasn't switched because I, I, I think you're an actor. I think you could be an actor. I love that Nicholas Cage is and like I you. Said, I'll meet anybody. You know, I'll do anything at this point. And so he sent me to his." His agent Eileen Feldman, and I met. We're quite a way away from that. Um, she sent me to read for a, uh, a casting director named Annette Benson, who was casting a film called *The Nightmare on Elm Street*. Um, and uh, they brought me back to read for the director, Wes Craven, and um, I read for Wes uh, Craven and somehow got the job but I mean I was by no means an actor I didn't <laughs> have any desire to be an actor I was a Wanted musician, to be a musician. Uh, but the fact that these people were going to pay me what I found to be a ludicrous sum of money which was uh, it was kind of the sag minimum uh, it was twelve hundred and eighty-four dollars a week, which I, I mean, you know, I'd never seen that kind of dough before in my life. Um, I like when you can see him so smiling at the remembrances. I, I think the jury I will suddenly, resonate with that as well. You know, and then I did some other couple of dumb movies because I, I, I still Money. in my mind I was. A musician and this was just a way to uh, pay the rent pay the bills live um, then suddenly I found myself on that road I had been placed on that road uh, as a as an actor and, and then I kept doing it one thing led to another from film to film and then I now we're here I uh, was cast in a TV series called 21, 21 Jump, Jump Street, Street. When I was 22, I believe. Mr. Depp, between the time so that you um, were cast in Nightmare on Elm Street and you um, were cast in 21 Drum Jump Street, mm -hmm. how did you enjoy acting during that time? Interesting question. I don't know if it's relevant it if you enjoyed acting. To me, it was foreign to me, but I, I didn't, I, did, I didn't have any great. Um, Ambition. He just wanted to, to get be an paid. Actor. We love this. I, I'm a, a naturally, normally, I'm, I'm uh, I've always been quite a shy person. I've always been quite introverted. Uh -huh. And so there was a very strange metamorphosis from being one of four. That is to say, one not the center of attention in a band where you have this fraternity or this brotherhood. It's interesting because um, this will go to the defamation, and, you're out there and this all being pulled together to publicly, to and how public you're looking for. and how this being so public and, uh, will affect him. This when the I didn't see the relevance at first. I, I see it now. Got on the series, 
and my life started to change in various ways. That is to say that people started to, you know, you go into a restaurant and you'd see people whispering and pointing and all that. I, I was, uh, I was very uncomfortable with it. This I might also go to the medication. I didn't like it. And the therapy um, and just, the just anxiety that we'll get to later. This kind of sets that up. I, ne I never wanted to be the lead singer and the guy out front and uh, we'll get all the attention. And I, I didn't. So suddenly I was on my own and I was uh, the guy out front having to deal with this, uh, this, this, this newfound sort of notoriety. And it was, it was odd. It was very odd. And it was, yeah, it was a very uncomfortable thing. I, I mean, it, I don't think it's anything that one can get used to. I don't, I, I wouldn't, I'm not, I'm still not used to it now. And I, which I'm actually glad that I'm not used to it. Because if I were, I don't think I'd be the same person that I am. It's pretty powerful. Mr. Depp, did there come a time when you became passionate about acting? What's interesting is that once I realized that I that that's the road that I was Herd's team could on, object to some of these as narrative. And it's strategic that they're not. It's smart that they're going not. Back to music would Yeah, the acting overshone it. Would be a um a, an un, a not it would have been I hated the idea that since the television series had come out and I had been exposed as this 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 character or this actor, uh, um, I had to realize in in my own mind and heart that there was no going back to music because I I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to use whatever amount of success that I had um, attained from the TV series and that sort of thing. I didn't want to use that to influence um, his music. Interesting. You, you know, some career in music. I, I he didn't want to use his I fame. Had far too much respect for to have a music um, career. Music. Um, then I wonder how he feels about TikTokers with their music what careers. They wanted me to become, which was a you know, teen idol or a teeny you know that. The teeny popper. Please thing. say it. I um I fought that with. Uh, Strategic with not to object. Do you team. see how we're all kind of hanging so, on his next word? Once the jury is that too. Music was no longer uh, an option. There's nothing coming then, in now that's um, I began improper to, uh, or study damaging to the um, defense. At various places, you know, the loft studio. So to now, not object allows him to um, talk in, without in them Angeles, seeming like they're uh, trying to just shut everything the, down. They're going to have to object teachers, more later. Uh, I think it's strategic to wait um, till it matters. This read, testimony legally doesn't matter all that much. It's setting the foundation, read, and but it just doesn't matter so all that so was much. Great, but um, you realize that. The only way to, the only way to l l learn, or, or the, the only way to learn how to, it's not act necessarily. That's what I'm here for. The only way to learn how I'm to react and behave, because it's just behavior and it's reaction, um, was to do it. it, it you. It's on the job Regina, training. Absolutely. It's trial by fire. And I think so, it will come a time um, later where they will have to. I did my best. They don't to, have to now. He's not talking about Amber. Work up, work my, work up my own this is going to explain approach towards the, the towards later medication, the therapy, self-medication. This is going into what all of it. What were a couple of the first few uh, projects that you worked on where you were really able to implement that approach? I don't know if this is relevant at all. But I would say. It's humanizing him to the jury. And they're going to allow it, and we're all captivated by I, I, I the way he talks. The, fir the first film that I had done that I really took, um, where I really felt okay, I've done the work. I I I, I know what I 
need to do. Um, it's interesting that he didn't feel that deserving. Was, that, that, where I considered myself an actor, I suppose, was 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 when um, Oliver Stone cast me in uh, Platoon in 1986. How did you come to be cast in Pirates of the Caribbean? Pam, he had to testify. No way around uh, it. And this will probably well, go on for at least a day, later, but, uh, if not a day and a half. I, I had been, um, Disney had offered me a film um, called yeah, we had to skip ahead to about, Pirates. About a man, his horse in the desert and stuff. And I, I remember Hilltop. I, I read the, uh, the screenplay. I don't want to ride a horse in the desert. It was for me. <laughs> um, Sounds hot. I wanted to have a meeting with them because I, at that point I had a um, two-year-old. Who starred uh, in Hell Dog? Yeah, two year, I don't remember. Two and a half-year-old daughter. And so, or three. And, 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 and for three years I watched nothing but. Destiny. Animated films. Um, uh, cartoon Thank you. from Tex Avery. Vigo to Mortensen. Funny to, I, I remembered Blonde. Um, that, 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 that was all I, I, I watched with my with my little girl. I love that he wanted and to be in a Disney movie for his kids. I, I love that so much. I the screenplay for Pirates. My kid's favorite ride at and Disney. It was, uh, I, I somehow in my mind, I saw this opportunity like a, a way to mesh characters like cart like cartoon characters for example it makes sense wily coyote gets a boulder dropped on his head and he's completely crushed but in the they cut to the next scene and he's just got a little bandage on his head so i i started thinking about the the parameters uh, that are that were available to cartoon characters, and if they were available to cartoon characters, and 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 nobody ever asked a question whether you were five or ninety-five, you didn't ask fine. a question. Oh, Wiley Coyote! Of course, he's still alive. So I tried to incorporate these uh, these kind of ideas into the character. Of Captain Jack Sparrow, so that, so, 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 so that I could try to push those parameters, and, and, and control the sort of suspension of disbelief, the, to be able to control the um, characters, actions, words, movements, and put them in a place where. The things that he would do or say were so either ludicrous or um, mainly something that also something to, to, the cartoon characters can get away with things we can't. Captain Jack Sparrow can do things that I could never do. He could say things that I could never so say. So are these good questions? It's so foundation. It for me. This is foundation that feeds into later. Stretch the parameters of, of a character. And part of it's to endear uh, him to the jury. And so take, that they uh, see take him a risk uh, in doing that. But as his characters, it, but Pirates is critical out, because I, he I, lost I, Pirates I, after I the article came out. Pretty good and that's mission. part of their argument about it damages. Out, I thought that it might be a character who would be accepted. He saw this world building. Five year olds and. 45 year olds. No, we're still in Johnny Depp's case. She probably won't testify till her case. In the same way that Bugs Bunny is, uh, you know. And I think he accomplished that. that. Sorry. You mentioned mm. that you received the script. When was that? I'm sorry. When did you first receive the script for Pirates of the Caribbean? Uh, the, the, the first screenplay I, I, I received was uh, 2002, I believe. Yeah, 2002. And what did you think of that script when you received it? Um, I thought that it had all the kind of hallmarks of a of a of a Disney film. That is to say, 
a kind of a predict predictable <coughs> Safe. predictable three act <laughs> structure um, with uh, with and the character of Captain Jack was was more um, he was more like a swashbuckler type that would kind of swing in shirtless and you know <laughs> Which be is the different hero. for Disney um, back then and I I had quite different ideas about the character so I incorporated my notes into the character and brought that character to life um, much to the chagrin of Disney at initially. first I'm sure yeah initially now when you say you made changes to the character so when I say that, that she won't testify in this case. She's also um, just, suing him. You know, in, in preparation. So there's two you know, the, parts the, the, of this trial. The, the same, the very same I think way she'll testify in her part of this trial. You, I don't know if his team will call her. I'd be surprised if they did. On, they could. Um, but I'd be surprised. You know, it could be anything. Like Edward Scissorhands, for example, was uh, based on a... He likes that suspending disbelief. ...dog that I'd had and... Uh, what? Newborn babies edward says her hands was based on a dog that i had a newborn I baby them, you, know, you learn something new every because day because i thought that edward would see things from the the sort of uh, the uh, from a place of innocence um and not knowing exactly what things meant or were and and also that that look of uh, a, a pure, innocent child when they experience something for the first time. Um, those those were the the two main ingredients that I th thought would serve the character. Karen, that is and the point of some of this. Captain Jack. Again, the cartoons. You know the, the Pepe Le Pew. It was a, it was a. Uh, Pepe Le Pew and Spo for it's like it's Jack like Sparrow. You heard it here first. Soup, you know, it's ingredients. It's just this is his attorney, um, Camila Vasquez. There's some Pepe Le Pew in there. There's some Keith Richards in there. Oh, we know there's Keith Richards in um, there. There's a bit of a, you, you, you know, I figured this is a guy who's been on the sea for the majority of his life quite possibly his brains may have been scrambled a bit by the sun and I also mean, okay. i thought that he'd been on the sea for so long that he had his sea legs but, but no land he legs. on land he just didn't have his land legs so interesting he could never quite <laughs> stand still i think the questions about his career turn out in your view go to the fact that he was such an um, instrumental part in these characters it. Because later they're going but to say, the, I believe that, that he film, wasn't well, I mean, working on these roles, and that's why he was fired. Pretty well, apparently. And uh, they say he didn't see it. And uh, they wanted to keep going, uh, making. Uh, he didn't watch more. the first Pirates and movie. I was fine to do that, uh, as uh, it was. It there's great freedom in in being able to. It's not like you become that person, but if you, if you know that character it, it, to the degree that I did, because he was not what the writers wrote, so they really weren't able to write for him. So once you know a character better than the writers, that's when you um, you have to uh, uh, be true to the character and add that. your words. Uh, at the at the rewrites. Um, this also goes to him having an ear was, uh, as he's rewriting dialogue, filming these movies. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I believed in the character wholeheartedly, and because the other side's going to characterize that the, as drug uh, and alcohol use, not that he's writing it in real time. Initially, the Disney uh, folks were somewhat upset. <laughs> I want to hear more about that. It's not relevant at all, but I want to hear more about that. that. The film was, to your understanding, a great success. How did your life change after the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie came out? Um, though I'd been around for many years. It's already, fascinating and, testimony. Uh, people, people knew who I was, and 
all that. Um, after Pirates 1 came out, there was a, a, a completely different, it was a completely different uh, way of life was, was, was being sort of, you know, my family and I were being plunged into. That is to say, you know, at our house in Los Angeles, you would have, you would have people trying to climb the gates to get into Sea Captain Jack Sparrow. Um, this is going to go to how much team he has around him. Bust in the gates. The monitor in front of Captain him Jack Sparrow, is for exhibits have, it, it, when they come up on the screen. Follow you or follow you and your family. So that's what so that's for. That was, that was the moment when um, th th there was no other way. Valerie, yes, to, for juror we, we safety. Had to hire more security. So that they remain anonymous. Guards, and I was certainly worried for my kids. Um, safety, and so then we—that's when the instead. Of oh yeah! Don't forget to like the one stream. One guy. There were there, you know there were started, there became several security people because I wanted to make sure that my kids were safe when they went to school or when they went to Disneyland or when they went to the mall or whatever. And this um, is showing why his life so yes, changed. So more security and, you and know, with his team. just getting followed, you know, by hordes of paparazzi and things like that. It's, 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 uh, I've had worse jobs, certainly. I can't complain about it. But, um, yeah, uh, after a while, you realize that. Uh, Ali, see, I know our legal um, system is a whole different uh, thing. Left the building in the British system a long time ago. You know, anonymity's gone. Anonymity has left the and, building. Facts, and that's a, that's an odd thing to deal with. Um, when you just when you're an introvert, I mean, you can't just drive down to the diner and get a cup of coffee or something. It's not uh, possible. It, it, it turns into something else altogether. I kind of love that so he said diner and not Starbucks, you know, even though I'm a Starbucks girl. It's acceptance. And there's, of course, there's a bit of sacrifice uh, involved. I, I, I can't complain about the uh, work that she I've She needs to ask another question because this is getting I narrative. I can't complain about any of that. Um, He's, we don't think you're complaining. Right um, but also... But, it does make you have to think very creatively with when you've got little kids about how to take them to the park yeah, or, to, you know, to the swings or to the this or that or movie or, you know, it becomes a, it becomes a strategic mission. And, 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 and that's what happened after pirates. Now you mentioned your family, who did your family consist of at that time? My, my, Vanessa, um, parody, the mother. I'm of my sure children. she doesn't want to interrupt him either. Um, she needs we to were a little bit. For 14, 15 years. Um, myself, uh, our daughter, Lily Rose, and um, our boy, Jack. Now, you mentioned hiring more security. Did you already have a security team at the time that Pirates of the Caribbean came out? I'd had, I, yes, you, you, because there had been. Frankie, been this isn't a stupid question. This is a great a question. Prior to that, in so, civil cases, it can depend, uh, but yes, there is a right to jury in civil cases. I was. The parties I can was, ask uh, for a bench trial where just the judge hears recognized, it. Recognized, but I was known, so yes, they do have a right to a jury trial to, in civil matters. To have any we have a very jury based system. Experience that might be normal. You sort of had to have somebody around to uh, get you out of a squirrely situation should it arise. So I had security. You're welcome, Janie. Prior to that, I do my best. For who would travel with myself and my family, um, but not like you know when I was at work. I back then I didn't have security. At, work so much you know, anything, not before pirates pirates was really the uh that was the thing that everything um 
it, it all turned around. It all just went went uh, weird. Part of the point so of this trial security team change is the public the seeing all out. of this. It's part of the point. He well, like said, said it at the anything, beginning. It, it had, it, he it wants to tell his story, and that's and part of this. Guys, so that's why a bench gals, trial gets very much uh, into the legal. Because a jury trial can get much more into the emotional, um, and they're determining the facts. Because if, also if, after the judge Vanessa, determining the Vanessa, UK case, for example, she worked in. I imagine France that Depp feels and if she was burned by France, that. So um, this would not be a great bench and, trial and for Depp. I was in LA with the kiddies then um been working i love that he called his kids um, the kiddies security would uh security would basically pick my kids up at school or whatever and bring them home so that became the routine driving them to school bringing them home um um so, 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 so yeah, and then if I went somewhere, so, so the, it just the security guards kind of multiplied because you needed to protect your street, your house, your kids. Endless. I'm so sure, no doubt it felt the endless. Caribbean, who has been on your security team? Um, and this goes to people Jerry who witnessed was, was with me for the witness the different confrontations that are being years. discussed down the road. Um, so this is laying the foundation for Jerry who Judge was around. Is, is, you, we mentioned it before. He, um, you all know who we're talking about. Uh, he looks at the jury. You all know what I mean. Um, you know who Jerry is at this point. I love that. Jerry would go on I love film that. sets with me. He would he would do reconnaissance missions, you know, that is to say, he would go to a country before we would go there. He would do advanced sure work. The hotel rooms were all taken care of and such. Um, or when I went on tour with, uh, say, the Hollywood Vampires, uh, um, which is a, a, a band that I've played with, um, he would come on the road with me with another security Thank you, Kim. Um, guard. Uh, so there was Jerry Judge, there was Malcolm Connolly, who's been with me for 20 years or more. Um, Leonard Damien. Hey, Amy, good to Sean see you. Bett. I think um, there's no Travis, way to rein in how long Leonard his questions Gibbon. are, his answers are. Um, it is wandering. Mark Gibbs, I, I mean. His attorney can rein that in, but it doesn't hurt him at this Are point all of these, and he knows uh, his staff personnel still with you today name he knows his team he knows his people jerry has gone on and this gives him to uh, time somewhere else well jerry passed jerry made uh, this gives jerry, him time jerry to get more comfortable away. before we talk about the really shitty um, stuff from cancer so, so it's so fair jerry, jerry made his exit um, but the majority of those no the, uh, I believe all of those fellows are still with me yes when did Mr. Judge pass away? I, th I believe it was two two years ago, roughly, maybe a little less than two years ago. I just want to see if we're getting any um, clips of. Now I'd like to go through a couple of the how names Amber that you just mentioned um, is looking. What is Malcolm Conley's purview in in the realm of your security team? What is his role? Exactly, yes. Um, I do, this is distracting well, to me, which is why I'm not uh, staying on court TV. Now that Jerry is, um, J Jerry and Malcolm had worked together for a very long time. So I've met yes. Malcolm through Jerry. Um, after, after Jerry's passing, Malcolm obviously took over um, for Jerry. And so he would, uh, he would, uh, he took on extra uh, responsibility. Other H law and crime he has a nasty habit of copyright sure striking people for no reason. Ground, so I don't share their channel, we but going, thank you. That have done their, their uh, um, recon, you know, the reconnaissance and to make sure that the advance uh, work. 
um, everything was set up by the time we got there and that it would be a straight shot into the hotel without a gaggle of paparazzi. Um, you know, Sam, you I'm going to answer this when we get to the break. It's a great question. 50 screaming, hollering photographers. So, you, you know, you go in through a garage door. No, I felt that too, Steve. Through a slippery kitchen. The Johnny likes the people around him. You were, then you were taken to your room where you stayed. <laughs> when did uh, when did Malcolm Conley join your team? M Malcolm had joined. I mean, Jerry brought him on. So Malcolm has been with me for over 20 years uh, now. Which matters because they're going to talk yeah. about how they saw In him. In those 20 years, how often have you physically been present with Malcolm? How they saw him with behave, Malcolm. what they know of him. Yeah. Endless, countless, how all they, over the world. They've seen him intoxicated, um, the and they've seen him, world. you know, at his worst and his Everywhere. best. And Los those witnesses Angeles, matter. Japan, um, Serbia, um, you know, films, tour. Um, Malcolm was my, uh, he, you know, he, 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 uh, when we were on the Vampires tour in Europe, throughout Europe, and Malcolm was on the bus with me. We we lived on the bus together, basically. How often is Malcolm in LA with you? It, it depends if, if there's a, or if there was a, a, a larger premiere. Not until know, the court takes a break. Where, um, same for the lawyers, same for the jury. A break should know, probably be coming up pretty soon. It had to be worked out so that it didn't turn into a chaotic, uh, or, and or dangerous event because sometimes there are between you and the people there are these barriers and uh, oh we know we covered astro sometimes World. the professional uh, photographers or the professional autograph people will surge forward and in the front rows of these behind these barriers you have you have little kids and Older women and older men. And so do I count as older women now? Surge forward. These people would start getting. I feel like I do. Kind of crushed against the this metal. I don't know how we're talking about turn. concerts, and but I I'm glad that we're um, here. That 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 was the that was the most uh, worrisome thing when 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 you're at a premiere and there. are thousands and thousands of people there and I always call it running the gauntlet essentially what it is is the people are there to um to say hi and to support uh, the film or the cast or whatever so i um i've always gone out and and signed for those people i've always gone out and signed for all or as many as because i was talking about the crushing injuries when crowds because that's what he's talking about and i've covered it on this channel quite a bit to make me stop signing take me away um i don't doubt that at all that his um, team would pick him up and take him out because he wanted to sign every autograph so, i don't doubt that at all yeah uh, he lost his train of thought ask him another question was, uh, nope come on in bring another those, question those, those kind of things again Bring you it in. You don't really get used to that. Bring another you question. Know. Now's the time. So don't let him make, don't make him feel like he has to fill space. Uh, Ask him another question. The original uh, yep. part of your question was I wandered. got lost in the gauntlet. Uh, I'll move on. Uh, what about <laughs> Sean Bed? How long is he? Nope. The court wants to take a break. Now? Would that be okay for afternoon That's break? That's fine. Yep. That's Let's go, why don't we go ahead and, and do that? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our afternoon break. Please do uh, it's completely take appropriate. Minutes. Do not discuss. Uh, the case and do not do any outside research. Okay. Thank you. When he starts wandering, I worry that he feels like he needs to fill time or fill space. His attorney should be kind of clipping off the end of his answer with the next question. So he doesn't feel like he's carrying the burden they need to. Um, and he's standing to let the jury walk out, which is respectful. He needs to, um, Sir, just a reminder, since you're on the witness stand now, you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody to include your attorneys, okay? All right. 
and let's come back. I guess we can come back at uh, three thirty-five. Is that okay for everybody? Okay. So thank you. About fifteen minutes, and I'm going to answer questions and super chats during that period of time. His attorneys can give him stylistic points, but not discuss his testimony with him. They can say, you know when you're done with your answer, stop and let us ask you the next question and kind of give him a little bit of space um, for that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the audio off here and keep this running. The reason I moved away from law and crime um, is because they did try to strike my channel, even though this is open feeds. So I went to court TV. I wanted to see if they would play anything in the meantime, and we'll see if they do. And I'll bring that back up. So we are going to uh, cover some questions and super chats before we rejoin Johnny Depp for his testimony. When I said this testimony could take three days, um, this testimony can take three days. We've got, we're not even into the heart of his testimony. And I think we will just get to the heart of his testimony this afternoon if that there are numerous instances that he needs to go over and then cross-examination will probably take a day. I think we could see him testifying uh, today, tomorrow and Thursday as well. So I'm going to get into questions and super chats while we have a break and we will go from there. So um, this is a great question, Jess. This is when summoned for jury duty, is it for criminal cases or is it also for civil cases that go to trial? It depends on what courthouse you're summoned to and the jurisdiction you're in. In Los Angeles, there's a criminal courthouse and a civil courthouse and a federal courthouse. So you could be summoned to a federal criminal trial, a federal civil trial, a state criminal trial, and a state civil trial. So you could be summoned to one of four different types of trials in three different courthouses. So it depends on where you live and if civil and criminal happen in the same courthouse or not. So yes, you could go to a civil trial or you could go to a criminal trial. Um, and yes, we see, yes, yes. So Chris, thank you for the super chat. Um, I think it is hard for anyone to testify. It is hard to be on the witness stand with the person that you are suing and look them dead in the face and be like, I'm going to just say it all. And with this, he's going to have to go through quite a lot of testimony. Frankie, always, we do not speculate on people's mental health addictions. Ooh, we don't hit the mic either, Emily. We're professionals here. Um, no, he doesn't seem nervous. He seems considered to me. So he seems very slow and considerate um, and and consistent in his testimony. For a veteran performer, he seems off nervous. He does seem nervous, but we've also learned that he is an introvert um, and that he does not like being kind of the spotlight. This is also very different from filming a movie, just like it's different than making a YouTube video. On, on movie sets, he's just surrounded by the crew and the cameras. Here, there's a jury sitting there staring at him. There is a gallery of people live sitting there staring at him. Amber Heard and her entire legal team is sitting there staring at him. And then the cameras of the world are on him in real time. No editing, no script, no lines, no breaks. This is a very unnerving thing to do. Matt Bond said, I've spent time with him. This is the honest, serious Johnny. He is super careful with words when it counts. Love you, Johnny. Thank you for that, Matt Bond. And thank you for sharing your personal experiences with Depp. Um, this testimony really supports the narrative we heard from the therapist. He hates discussing this. It absolutely does support um, the testimony from the therapist. And we will see others um, later. I'm going to go back to Court TV because they are recapping some of the testimony. But you guys can, as they recap this, I'm going to leave audio off so you can see um, how Amber Heard is responding to his testimony. So with that, we are going to continue taking some questions. Um, Nicole F., your coverage is amazing. Hydrate and take care. I absolutely will. I have not only, um, I have three things of water up here in varying temperatures for the voice. So we are going to hydrate so much that we will probably have to pop off and take a bathroom break. Question, will you be streaming for his entire testimony? I'm going to try to stream for his entire testimony. Um, we do. <laughs> I am actually looking at moving around some calls tomorrow, though I might have to just take a break during the lunch break and then come back. But yes, I am hoping to stream during his entire testimony. So that's, that's the goal. 
I don't remember if Vanessa Paradis is on the witness list. I would absolutely have to take a look at that. Will Heard take the stand? Yes. Heard. So there's another question that's going to come up later. I'm going to try to answer it. Um, I'm going to try to answer it now. And I, I marked it somewhere later. But this case has two parts, if you will. So Johnny Depp is the plaintiff. He is suing Amber Heard. And I broke this down in a case brief that's on the channel. If you want a brief of what the different charges are um, in about a 30 minute video and podcast episode for the Emily show on your favorite podcasting app. But he is suing her for defamation over the op-ed for $50 million. She is counter suing him for defamation for things his attorney said in articles for $100 million. He has a case in chief where he needs to prove his case and then she has a defense, but she also has a case in chief and he has a defense. So it's multiple parts of a trial. And right now we are just getting his side's main part of the trial. And then we will get to her defense and her case in chief and then back to his defense. So that's why, yes, Heard will testify. She might testify in her case. But as we saw in the Cardi B, Tasha K defamation trial, Tasha K was the first witness Cardi B's team called to the stand. So Cardi B called her in their case. And then Tasha K testified again in her own case. That can happen here. Depp's team can choose to call um, Amber Heard to the stand for certain things. I don't know if they will or if they won't, but they can. Thank you for the super sticker. Thank you. Um, as a CA survivor, this is devastating. His story about his childhood is very, very difficult. It's also going to lay the foundation for the expert testimony about relational violence that is going to come up later. Has Heard's prior history of abuse come up in trial yet? No. Can it be taken into consideration for the verdict? Kind of. It will likely be used to impeach her. The verdict is going to be, did one of them defame the other? That's what they're looking for. Who's responsible? Who's liable for defamation? And the jury might say, both of you defamed each other and it's a wash. They might say that Depp you know, defamed Heard, but Heard didn't defame him. We will have to see. Um, but yes, it can come up to go against her character when she testifies. It might come up if they asked Depp if he knew about that. Um, but we will have to see about that. There's pretrial motions on those things and all of those aren't on the record. Uh, KCC 145 said he sued the paper in the UK and lost. It's harder to prove defamation there. The question was different there, and I broke that down in that episode I just talked about, but the question was different there, and it was harder for him to rebut Amber Heard's testimony in the UK, because in the UK, the question was not so much did all of this abuse take place, or was there mutual abuse, or was he a victim? That wasn't the question. The question was, did the Sun UK have enough information to call him a wife beater without it being defamatory? Was it basically good enough? And so they put on Amber Heard and we're like, these are the 14 incidents. This is what she told us about. We believed her. That's enough for us to run this headline. So the standard is different. And you've got one judge deciding whether the Sun UK was told enough by Amber Heard to make it um, so that when they used that headline, it was not defamatory. So it had to be substantially true. But he didn't get to rebut Amber Heard's testimony there because it wasn't about whether her testimony was true per se. It was about whether it was true enough that the Times could actually, or the time, uh, the Sun UK could actually rely on it. So it is a narrow distinction, but it is different. So yes, Amber will testify. When is the question? Um, Kit Kat said, in my opinion, he's coming across as a victim of childhood trauma very much. Um, very sympathetic. It's almost painful. E e yes. And the thing is, there will be some that will say, well, is that his acting? And some that will say, is this real memory? It seems authentic. It doesn't seem polished. And that might be why his lawyers are letting him ramble a bit at the end of his questions, because it seems like contemporaneous thought. It does not seem like um, a rehearsed answer. And you don't want him to seem rehearsed. You want him to seem that he is remembering and giving true and accurate testimony in the moment. And it comes across that way. Let me know what you think about that. If that comes across as true remembrances, not as a rehearsed statement. I believe Amber Heard is guilty, but he's no angel. I mean, there's definitely elements of both of them are difficult. I wonder what her lawyer said to her. 
Um, she took his money and went to her next goose egg. I guess we will see. Um, Nancy, I think we answered this in the moment, but the motive of some of the background questions are going to go to how he reacted, how he reacts to things. And it's going to lay the foundation for the expert that's going to testify later. Um, Jess said, I'm late. There's no late here. We just, we all get here when we get here. I'm late, but starting from the beginning, but wanted to say a huge thanks for this stream. You're welcome. A huge thank you to the mods who are like, we're riding all day then. Yep. We're <laughs> today, tomorrow. We will see when his testimony finishes, but yes, we are riding. Aurelia said, I see this with lots of clients. They tell themselves, don't be like him, her when referring to their caregivers. Yeah, it seems that his parenting style was not my parents. Just don't be my parents. And that's something I've seen play out with my friends and those that I know, especially when they had alcoholic and or abusive parents. It was like, I just don't want to do that. Um, I love your insight, Emily. You're the best. Thank you. Even more so in difficult cases like this. This case is tremendously sad. And I know there's a lot of um, side picking. But what I see in this case is two people who had very, very difficult upbringing, ending up in a relationship where their own individual trauma created more trauma between the two of them. It is a sad dynamic. Um, and it's a dynamic that played out. If she had never written the article, they would have gone their separate ways and this wouldn't have gotten so blown up, but here we are. So Stephanie, I'm not sure exactly what story we're talking about, but yay. <laughs> Um, did this not really set up how much heard hurt his reputation? A lot of this will set up how much it hurt his reputation and the loss of jobs. There's going to be a lot of talk about pirates, not only because they want to remind the jury that he's Johnny Depp, you love him. There's a part of that. Um, he definitely carries more weight as an actor than Amber Heard does. I don't think a lot of people are being like, she's Mira. My husband's like, wait, she is. And we've seen Aquaman a, a, a number of times, Jason Momoa, but people it, with the red hair and stuff, people don't remember that she was in that movie. She is not a star on the caliber that he is, and they are leaning into that. Her team is going to have to lean into, she's not as big of a star. That's why this is so hard for her. They are going to have to undo that bell because this jury is going to like Johnny Depp at the end of his testimony. And we will see how much this jury likes him at the end of this case. So um, Jennifer said, I am team Johnny Depp and I think he should win. He seems genuine and lovely. I adore him. He is someone I would love to hang out with. Thank you for doing the coverage. You're welcome. Um, I'm still, th this defamation case is not easy. Johnny Depp may win in the court of public opinion and not win in the court of law on this case. It is a very real possibility. Amber Heard's team has already tried to shift what they mean by this article in the Washington Post that she was reporting domestic violence and she had gotten a restraining order. So if you take those things as her being speaking out, then maybe this isn't defamatory because technically that's true. There's going to be some hair splitting when we get to the end of the day here. So the issue of what was said, is it defamatory, is going to get buried under who did what to who. And the who did what to who is what's playing out because of the headlines that he talked about, the people article with her with a bruise on her face, the photos that are everywhere, the restraining order. He is trying to combat all of that in the court of public opinion, as well as the court of law. So, um, it's been my experience that abusive personalities typically love bomb to manipulate and establish control. He is establishing why he is susceptible. Renee B, they are going to have an expert that will discuss all of this. I was hoping they would have that expert before Depp testified. I think him testifying is probably going to be used just to lay the foundation for that expert. And that expert will get into their dynamic as a couple. I imagine that this will absolutely be brought up by that expert and we will see that live. Um, when I, I hope, I hope close in time to when Depp finishes testifying. I hope that that expert is the next witness. It would be very, very powerful if it works out scheduling. Um, Frankie said it's showing his passion for a character that was taken from him. Absolutely. And showing that Disney couldn't just replace him and how uh, kind of integrated he was with that character. 
I would love to know how many civil cases in the U.S. end up going to trial. Seems from the coverage, most settle or are resolved before trial. Lawnard from Ireland. So sorry if it's a silly question. No silly questions, Sinead. <laughs> Sinead, no silly questions. No silly questions. I'm here for all of the questions, even the ones uh, that are funny. So this one's not funny. Most cases in the U.S. system settle, particularly in the civil system. This case has taken years to come to trial. This was filed in 2018. We're in 2022. Some of those delays were because of the vid, but this is how long things can take to come to trial. And that is a very real thing. The longer it takes to go to trial, the more expensive it is for the parties. These parties have money. So, I mean, debt probably more so, but these parties have money to wild out, you know, this case. The Cardi B, um, Tasha K case, a defamation case between a YouTuber and a celebrity took place, um, in much shorter shrift than this one did and still cost over a million dollars in legal fees without even a fraction of the litigation that went down in this case. This is millions and millions of dollars to get to this trial, but yes, most civil and criminal trials settle before they ever get to trial. And our court system is backed up, very backed up. Um, Chris, he definitely, definitely made the, made the leap from being a kid in an eye patch to being a pirate. It's the redemption arc there on his childhood upbringing to Jack Sparrow is pretty incredible, but it's not, it's what it's the story his team wants to, to tell, but it's not the whole story. And we're going to get to the harder parts of the story. We're at the, you know, a kid with a tough childhood made good. We haven't gotten to the dark side of fame stuff yet. Uh, Julie Scott said, I'm a sea captain and land legs are real. I mean, I'm not a sea captain. I've been on a few cruises. And even then, my experience with getting back on land is rough. I can only imagine it. And that is in no way to minimize. Um, but that's the only experience I have really with much boating. I am not a huge boater, though I do like the water. Joe, question, if this was held in Fairfax County, would the jury pool be picked from those registered in that county? It depends on their court system. Generally, it stays within the county or those within a certain distance from the courthouse in the state, depending on the size of the county. So yes, the jurors are local to Fairfax or relatively local. It just depends on each county's rules. Whimsical says my heart breaks for him. Um, let's see. They're, they teased me and the chat's not even going courts back. <laughs> Or maybe you are, and I just didn't see it. They were teasing me. Um, my heart breaks for him. He sounds hurt and even scared. I think of him as being so private and having to go through this testimony cuts even deeper. He does seem, oh, judge is back, judge is back. He does seem private, and he explained some of that. So they said ready for the jury, so the jury's going to be coming back in. I like the audio on this feed better. Um, they're still recapping on their channel. He's back on the stand and the jury will walk in. We'll probably see him stand up. I'm going to try to get to a few more questions. Um, but I will, I will be here to get through questions at the end of this for sure. Question, if it hasn't been answered already, it might have been, will the outcome of this trial have any bearing on Heard's trial? This, this is all one trial. So they, the jury's going to have to decide, and I might not have gotten to that and do go to my case brief episode on this. Um, his case, his his suit against her and her suit against him are all going to be decided by this jury. The jury instructions are going to have both. They are all going to be decided. So if they find that he defamed her, they're probably going to find that she didn't defame him. They could find that everybody defamed everybody and give nobody damages. We will see. So part of the, um, part of her case is his team calling her statements a hoax. So I see it more likely if they find that she defamed him, they're not going to find for her. And if they find that she didn't defame him, they're more likely to find uh, that his lawyer Depp, defamed like her by saying it was a hoax. Go through the security personnel that you just listed out. No, we did we that. Asked and answered. Um, how Why? long has Leonard Damien be, been with you? Yes, this could go longer than three days. His testimony will take as long as it takes. Though if it wanders, the judge might try to wrap it up. Now 20, 23, Leonard's. Leonard Damien's been with me, I believe, roughly the same time as Mr. Bett, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood. I will talk about this on the break for sure. 16, 17 years. I, uh, I, yeah, I can't be precise, but they were very young. My children were very young when, when they uh, 
join the team, yes. which was re really after Pirates was released in 2003, the first. Now you mentioned your children is, no, what is uh, Mr. Say. Damien's role with respect to your children's security? Excuse me? You mentioned your children know. with yes. respect to Leonard Damien. Is his role in connection with your children's security? Uh, no, I'm have to yeah, do that in a minute. Yes, very much so. Leonard, um, <clears throat> Leonard is Leonard Damien, and um, and Sean Bet for for uh, quite a while. We're both um, sort of assigned. They should be able to legally. To, I don't know if they kids, will. Um, uh, taking them to school, picking them up from school, if if uh, Vanessa and I were unable to do it, or he even was not we allowed there, to talk about his testimony. Them, but he is allowed to talk um, to with them. To Just um, he, they can't tell him say this, say that. And but he's a over witness. The, the years. So now it's obviously don't talk about the testimony. Your children. Uh, my children have, have uh, taken. Uh, Quite a shine to 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 them. I'm going to talk about this. They become break. like um, another set of parents in a way. That doesn't. Surprise and how long me. has Travis McGivern been with you? Travis, I believe, a little bit less than that. I believe. If you're going to ask I, me if somebody's been with I me 15 or 20 years, I'm going to be really like, are you kidding? Uh, I still have to count on my fingers less, maybe it's for how long I've been married. 13 years? Or, but there's no way. I don't know. Yes, but I will again. Now, you mentioned that you had to bring on additional break. security after Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, yes. How has the fame associated with that, the, that franchise affected your, your personal relationships? No, um, his kids are not with Amber Heard. Again, I, 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 I would never. What is fame? Complain about the re, the repercussions, let's say, or yeah, the the repercussions of the collateral um, damage of fame. The success of that film. Um. But of course, as I said, there are sacrifices that one <clears throat> one has to make. Um, sacrifices that you're you're not nearly ready for. Um, yes, we will go through this. Just simply um, when at the break, chronically witty. When you check into a a lot of prep goes into go this. to a town or you. Even though his testimony is not scripted, tour or something and you're staying they would have gone over dates and incidents quite People a lot. stay in hotels all And the he time. was deposed. I stay. <laughs> I stay in the hotel. I, it, it's, uh, we've found that it's just a lot easier if that I stay put in a hotel and can't go out. Um, not. Yes. Kind of this is his team laying foundation. Again, especially if it's they like all should be pretty easy. I don't want them to. I, I've never wanted them to see me as as a novelty. I just wanted to be dad. You know. Um, now he said novelty well a few times, of, uh, which is interesting. A lot, and uh, they're well aware of pretty much everything. Um, but no, you, you you know you, you when you get when you get recognized uh, wherever you go, um, the, the the basic the basic truth is it's, it's it's pretty simple. People are generally kind and curious, um, and if if you've if if they've grown up with you in their living room um, from a television series or from various films that that they've seen um, there's there's nothing menacing about being recognized or sometimes there can be sometimes people can get 
over excited get weird and <laughs> but but uh um we've found that it's, it's just uh it's it's better all around if if i um stay in my hotel room and uh and don't go out uh, this is where she should be asking a new question because it, it generally causes a bit of a hubbub if you go to a restaurant someone calls the paparazzi and you go in for a meal and you That's come out thing. and there's 30 guys out there it's uh it can be um a little overwhelming it's not it's not something i think i said it before he's trying it's, to explain it's not something that it's not bad that i that that but he's an introvert and it's overwhelming it's not something that i've ever gotten used to and it's something that i she hope should have cut him off because he's report he's repeating um, himself and it's okay to tighten this up because I, I don't think of myself in those terms i used to be um i used to be johnny if if, if that makes sense i used to be johnny and then my name full name which I, I, this is I, in virginia honestly fine still it's difficult it's, if i it's uncomfortable to say my own name oh that's because hard. i when when i say it i hear the commodity i hear the product so i <sighs> just i went from johnny to johnny depp and um and then that name um with that name johnny depp and some image was cultivated um certainly not by me but this is also going to go to the value the, of his reputation media um especially in those days they, they must label you they have to give you a label um and labels are one of the things that I've fought vigorously with regard to my work. And with regard I, to his I, life now. I never wanted to be um, <clears throat> the poster boy. I never w wanted to be the... Uh, I don't it's have... John I, you know, C. I'm not built with that kind Depp. of hubris. I don't, I don't have that kind of... Uh, we love hubris. We love uh, we love a good uh, use of word. Confidence. I, I I can do virtually anything playing a character. I can become the character. Lose himself in my work. Interesting. Um, and that character may be able to he may be able to spit out a hundred words a minute, but me myself, Johnny, I. Uh, cannot <laughs> so the, the, therein lies the difference you know it sounds Mr. like Depp, he sounds safe acting, feels safer as a character what other artistic pursuits do you have that we a little about less known to the general public how is this relative and painting well i've remained uh, a, but i don't a know musician. why it's relevant I've been a musician um i started playing the guitar when i was 12 years old and uh that saved my life because I locked myself into a in, in my bedroom um, at the age of twelve, uh, listening to you know records, moving the needle back. And <laughs> You've got a fairly young things. jury; they don't know what you mean. Oh well, records are hip again. Maybe they so, do. <laughs> uh, so much so, to, I mean, that I I I I don't remember. Uh, I, I I have no memory of going through puberty. I I I, uh, I was just playing the guitar. I was just, I love that. I was obsessed with uh, my guitar. Any other artistic pursuits? Um, I yeah. I mean, I've always drawn since I was very small, since I was very little. Um. Oh, and always enjoyed drawing and then began to paint um and so they started learning about painting and trying to um um 
it, it, I suppose different ways of of expressing oneself, different ways to different ways to um, release um, the things that are living in 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 your head, whether they be I'm surprised beautiful memories that the defense isn't kind of clipping memories, this a bit. Whether they be because again, it is narrative, um, uh, it, but they're letting it go. I, I, I have a. Um, I think they also want I, I Amber to, to be allowed the same. Create it's it's a need. The it's same a, space, in her testimony. Of course, I want to create as well, but I I, I actually need to create because I need to. There's summon no way we're done with direct today. Whatever, no way. Whatever it is that I need to summon to, whether and whether that's within a film, or a, a painting, or a guitar note, um, all of those things sh should come from a place uh, of of the, an organic place, a place of truth. Um, because if they don't, Mac, I think the jury is going to feel a lot like we do. I think they're going to be kind of fascinated well, then by you're it. Just lying, aren't you? I, I, every I think his attorney could throw him kind of a lifeline and bring in the person those doesn't have to say anything on film. Next questions. Um, what's important is what's behind the eyes. And if they do say something, what's important is not necessarily the words that they say. It's very easy to say I love you, but what brings it into the realm of truth is which is very fair, what's Frankie. Underneath it, what's Some not might being be. Said. It the is now subject, after lunch, if you will. She's letting his so, questions go on a bit too um, long. Any artistic or creative which is venture, tough. any film, anything that I do. That's um, that's where I'm coming from. That's that's my approach. Mr. Depp, you mentioned words, and I think the jury has already seen um, some words that you've written in text messages. Yes. Um, can you please tell the jury a little bit about how you write? I, I, certainly. I, yeah. Um, why do you use the word cunt so much? When I was young, when I was about twelve <laughs> years old, my my elder brother. That's the real um, question here. Danny. Um, walked into my room and ripped the Peter Frampton record off my record player. This is an interesting way to get into how do you write. And said, you got to stop listening to this stuff. And he put this record on. And it started, and I'd never heard anything like it. It was called uh, Astral Weeks by Van Morrison. So I'm a kid, you know, 12 years old. So... My brother turned me on to Van Morris, and then he turned me on to soundtracks like Clockwork Orange or uh, um, um, Last Tango in Paris. Or, I stole my brother's um, offspring turned album. Turned me on to books by Jack I Kerouac. Was 15. Turned me on to books by Ginsberg. I still have um, it. Philip K. Dick. I mean, he, Salinger. I mean, the whole James Joyce, the whole Hemingway, the whole thing. So, um, so I became very interested in. A vocabulary and and the I wonder if he created a character the, from him for himself the and if that's what we're getting to this is voices how I talk of these writers um and then I started reading people like Tom Robbins and Hunter S Thompson and then ended up becoming very close uh, friends with with um with Hunter Thompson that's a strange thing for the last uh, 10, 12 years Isn't of his it? life. Just... And uh, Hunter's writing, of course, because of the amount I spent, of time I spent with him, it has influenced my writing uh, greatly. Hunter was known for inventing this a is thing also called a good gonzo journalism. Which point. Is, it's it's, it's uh, the author putting himself in the situation um, uh, as opposed to writing it from the author's point.
point of view, he writes it with him in it. Um, and it, it, there are great um, embellishments and uh, embellishments are great sort of ways that he would twist things. I think letting and, him go um, like express, this explains um, his texting style more. His, 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 his feelings. And I think it um, makes his texting make more sense when you see him so he, he became a freeform hero, talking. Course, to me and a, a great friend. I, uh, uh, in my texts and in my emails, or sometimes just There we go. We came back writing, around to it. Um, you do, you take, you, you, you take the subject and you, um, try to express it in your own vernacular. And, and in that, um, as, for example, with the text nope. messages. Should I cut them off before that, I got to, for example, I apologize that everyone's had to, uh, experience <laughs> I am ashamed of uh, of some of the references fair uh, made. I'm uh, embarrassed that at the time the heat of the moment, um, the heat of uh, the pain um, that I was feeling um, went to went to dark places. There is no, if you're writing, he there just is bridged no right into that set place that you have to stay in. You can travel. That was fully a keep and reading moment. Sometimes, fully a keep reading moment for me. Um, he's almost explaining that he sees his texts, each text, as pain. a creative endeavor or creative expression and that's be, explaining why his text to be dealt with some of them are so vulgar humor. and it's and explaining kind of the dark humor she needs to ask another question dark, about it very dark because this has gotten very narrative um i i, I grew up watching monty python I, I, you know so same yes, it, it, it can tend to get into dark uh humor don't make us say me at you uh, tend to get uh this is narrative um words are used that for emphasis um and words are used to express what what you're feeling at the time and even um, if the jury doesn't understand now they will use this testimony like to explain up, in their closing you so even if it goes over their head now from those they're mistakes. going to turn it around in closing and talk about things. it. And um, at least he acknowledged embarrassment that everybody's forward, read his shitty texts. You know? Um, and that, that's how you that's how you start to understand yes, Juju B exactly this. Your own vernacular. But they need to and put it what's in. What's important, you know, what's necessary what's not necessary um i tend to be quite expressive in my writing we've seen and w after um <clears throat> after the uh after the unfortunate um this is very narrative words of the defense is restrained and not objecting um, We've hit like four topics um, in this answer about his writing. Made their way into my heart um, and my head. Those are those are two very opposing things. So you're check, you're check. trying to you you you're trying to find the best way to express something. Susie, to they a are friend. party opponents. Sometimes. You're so they are opposite to one another. The, so their texts know, are not protected. Something that you've done. Because they um, are party opponents. So marital um, privilege doesn't cover anybody in this. Just to make it sound, just to make him understand that. 
Question, can the jury uh, look know, up the cultural I'm subjects on, at home? I'm no, they can't look up anything relating to the case head. until later. I don't know what's going on. They can write down a Johnny Depp reading list for later I'm in this in their notes, situation, but they can't do it now. It cannot continue. Mr. Depp, the, the jury's heard quite a bit from Ms. Hurd's you side about your question. drug and alcohol use, but I'm sure they'd like to hear from you. So could you please just tell them about your history of substance use? Certainly. Getting into the harder um, stuff. Yep, grab the water. And this, this goes back to when I was... Buckle a, up, everybody. Uh, young boy. Um, they don't... Excuse me. They collect um, the jurors' notes at the end of the day, but they uh, let them have them the when they go to jury deliberation. I don't know. Four or five years old, I, I can remember vividly my, my mom... This jury's not sequestered. ...telling me to Correct. go get her nerve pills, you know, um, oh, this started early. Hanging on the back of the door. Trigger warning addiction. So I'd go get the nerve pills and I'd bring her the nerve pill. She'd take it. And, um, you know, after a few years, you start to notice, well, you start to think about nerve pills. Nerve pills. <laughs> and then she seemed to calm down after she took those nerve pills. So when I was 11 years old, um, I wanted to calm down and I didn't know yeah. how to. That's heartbreaking. So I, I'd bring my mom her nerve pill. I would walk away and I would take one myself um, to escape. Now ask the next question. Caring so much, feeling so much uh, to escape the, the, the chaotic um, nature of, of, what, of what we were living uh, through. Um, so that, that, that was the beginning. When I realized that nerve pills calm the nerves. Um, do we assume he's talking about Valium pretty here? Pretty young age to do that. I, uh, I can't say that I'm proud of admitting to that, but, but I, I have to say that I knew but that's my life. not what else to do. I knew nothing else that I could do. Um, so... As we were all growing up, there was always those kids who would say, let's party. Let's go party. I want to party. I've never used Chats like or Xanax or oh, the word party in my life. Or Liberium, I've fair, never, or gabapentin. I've never taken You're well -versed, any substance. Nerds. I appreciate you. Uh, for a party. We're thinking any variety of I downers. I've taken these substances over the years on and off. Um, to numb, to numb myself of, of, uh, this also tracks with the testimony the, from all the of ghosts, his friends, the wraiths that were still with me and, um, from, from, from my youth. So, um, it, it, I needed, yeah. I, 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 okay. Let him go. Everything. Next question. It was essentially, it was just self-medication. Um, one of those get me out of here moments. And the, you know, where you want to escape from is your own brain, your own head. But this makes sense with the testimony. How and when he pauses like that, ask him the next question. It um, makes sense with everyone else who said my, my that he's not much different when of he course, takes substances you know, and it makes sense that, um, if this is a numbing to, thing this is just uh, marijuana this makes sense with everything um, that we've seen in testimony to, this is very consistent also with depending that. on the where so. you're living and who you're 
um, associating with who was around the neighborhood, um, I no, I wasn't shy to uh, try a substance for I wasn't shy to, to try a substance. The effect of it would to see if we could be numb. Maybe even take a bit more of the edge off. So I I, I started um, at eleven, and I mean, I even mentioned this in an interview in TV Guide. If anyone remembers TV Guide, we're old. We do. Um, in 1989, where I was asked I'm by the journalist, <laughs> um, why. I believed that um, kids who were watching the show, 21 Jump Street, about police officers in school under, as un undercover, uh, undercover cops. But, uh, I had a friend that was students. an undercover cop. Um, I was asked why. I loved getting to see her work why and hear her stories. Kids or whoever should, should, should believe me or trust me or listen to me. And I said, look, I, 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 could, uh, because I've experienced it and I can tell them that there is no future in it, that there's nothing but a, 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 a kind of an, a postponing of the inevitable, that one day you're going to have to face those feelings. One day you will meet. You cannot numb them forever. Those, let's call them. Uh, demons um, from your youth, and this is um, again. We're going to get so into the demons, I was, I was, the monster. I was straight up, we're going to have to talk about it. Open and honest at, at that time in, in in a very, I mean, TV Guide was uh, Sherry. You know, yes, as he's talking about TV Guide, I'm going to answer this question. Out of the grocery store, um, it was like the most popular thing. In, all the testimony we've seen is that he wasn't little magazine. substantially altered but when I, he I, used substances. I, I told him I pretty and much done this explains that he was saying, I'm using substances to be numb. I'm not trying old. to party. I'm not trying to be um, the life of the party. I'm trying to um, escape my now, own demons. And that's very relatable. That doesn't mean to say that I continued. And Herd's in, in, into that, you know, team is going to try to paint of, him as uh, an off-the-rails, drug-abusing alcoholic. Possibility, And I don't know if that's going to square with what the jury's seeing here. Um, They're seeing someone who's I in a tremendous amount of pain. Um, you, you, dropping acid every five minutes. I wasn't... I, I, there were many years that I didn't touch a substance and no drugs. There were many years that I... Uh, didn't have a drink. Um, so it's. Oh, Joanne, I'm going to have to go check into that later. As I said, it, it, it's never Getting been banned from courtrooms for, takes some uh, action. Sort of party effect. It's been for trying to numb the things inside that have, that, 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 that plague, that, that can plague, plague someone's. Uh, Talk in uh, the first person. Just be the first person who's, who's experienced that plagued trauma. me from my trauma, um, which is probably hard for him. But it, I hope the jury sees the, the this, but if they don't, the lawyers have to connect this. Um, That's their job to connect this in closing as of, to the of, use of, did not make him violent. The characterization. It's of how he escaped. My substance, quote unquote, substance abuse. Don't um, say quote unquote. That's been delivered by uh, Ms. Hurd is is. I like that the captions uh, have it as Miss Hurd, not Miss is, is, is Hurd. It's kind of grossly funny. embellished. Um, On the offensive a little. And I'm sorry to say, but um, don't be sorry. We want to hear it now. Give us a tea. A lot of it is uh, bullshit. Say bullshit. It's just plainly false. Fair enough. I think that it was easy. It was an easy. Uh, I think it was an easy target for her to hit because once you've trusted somebody for a certain amount of years and you've and she told would have them known this, all the secrets of your life. That's when um, they hit. That information, then, of course, can be used against you. 
especially if it's taken to a point that is teetering on impossible. Uh, and teeters over impossible, in fact, at times. Hmm. It's so... I, I trusted her and she used that I, against me, I, is what I, I'm hearing. You've now wandered at, not, Come in with the next question, lawyer. Come on, lawyer. Some... S next question. Maniac who needs... Um, this opens a lot of doors for the defense, high though. Or loaded all the time. I'm not some I, maniac. I, in fact, the, 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 in Austra from before Australia, in Australia. Australia, I had been um, off off of alcohol. For for, I believe it it's about curious to months. me that the defense is letting this narrative go, but it opens doors for them. Mr. Depp, you've mentioned some yes. periods of sobriety the question. throughout your life. How many would you estimate you've had? Uh, okay, quite, well, they quite a number, talk uh, about you know, sobriety. On, on various films, I will be right back. See. Stream, I trust you. Um, Over 8,000 of you. Do the likey, subscribey things. Uh, I suppose, uh, I guess they shouldn't let him wander example, all the way because he said... I'm well, not some maniac, and that opens Hunter some Thompson's doors for the defense. And, loading in Las Vegas. and now we get to fear and loathing. Jay, I was, Chad, I'll be uh, right back. Lucky enough to make uh, into a film and, and, uh, with Terry Gilliam. The the film calls for myself and my attorney to be absolutely blotto out of our heads constantly uh, throughout the film, and. Most people just assume that, well, they just got wasted and they filmed them. There would have been no way to, you couldn't act that. You couldn't, I mean, you couldn't make that film with two actors who were loaded. There would be no way. Um, and then to the other extreme, Donnie Brasco, uh, a film that I made about a, an FBI agent. I, I, I had to... Uh, uh, I had to go and in, go into a training regime where I, I I had to eat five meals a day, drink five shakes a day. You know these protein shakes per day. Um, work out three to four hours a day because I had to gain twenty to thirty pounds of muscle. Uh, um, uh, there was certainly no, no abuse of. Um, substances uh, then uh, I there's been no abuse of substances on film sets there have been no uh, there's been no there's been no moments where I would have been considered out of control never in that fact, also is a very big statement. There's been no moments. I'm sure they don't want to mention it, but I remember that. That gives the defense we, room to chip away. Never, ever, not even once, not even one time. With Ms. Heard, um, Those are big, big statements, which is why you keep the questions wine. tighter. Um, and I, smoking um, marijuana. Don't be embarrassed about the weed, Johnny. None of us would, care. They used to tease me. Because the, because of uh, what they said was a, a, a ludicrous tolerance because I because I never appeared loaded or high or any of that. I I, I um, that's consistent. With even if even if I felt everyone little, who's testified so far, spinny, consistent know, it, with everyone. No one would have ever known. Consistent with every Depp, single person who's testified about being around him. To? Yes. And and what is that? Good. Get this out um, of the bag now. Roxy Codone or Roxy Cotton, which is Roxy. Um, it's an opiate. It's, What's um, the difference between Roxy and Oxy? Isn't it Oxycodone? Oxy 
codone has the opiate and then some pain, like a paracetamol or something. By the way, opiates. And, and then the Roxy's are just oh, the addictive. opiate, as far as I uh, remember. And um, when I was I was working on Pirates 4, and... Uh, Which one's 4? There, there was a scene in which I had to... Um, grab this large gold and uh, gold and red you know stately gilt chair pick it up and throw it chuck it out this uh, big giant window and so i did it and thanks all as i swung around to throw the throw the chair out the window um I felt this immediate electricity from Ooh. from the bottom of oh, my spine down to down my left leg, yeah. um, and it was like an electricity that burned. It, it, it. So anybody in the I chat had, with back problems? Obviously done it was sciatica, so I had obviously pinched anybody with back nerve pain. Done something. So I went to. Because I've been there. I saw a chiropractor or a kine or whatever. I saw chiropractors and, and uh, to no avail. Uh, then I saw a doctor. And, and, did you uh, honey the a disc? How did we get to this question? She uh, recommended and prescribed to me was uh, uh, roxycodone. Everyone who's um, had nerve pain in their back is like, yep. And... Uh, I have a fusion at L5 S1. There was a part of me that was a little bit worried, it just in a sense that I, I, I know um, I witnessed uh, friends and when I had my first back surgery, people over the years who have I would have um, done anything to escape that who nerve had pain. problems with uh, heroin, you know, um, and. I, I didn't want to get bit by that snake, and his texts make a lot. I started taking the Roxy's, and uh, I was bit by the snake. And then, before you know it, pain and pain pills um, are that, a hard thing. That monkey is on your back to stay. All and of the it's not like you take those pills to get high you you take them to once 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 the addiction has grabbed hold of you my hardware is very cute in my elf you, you're not taking those pills to get high you're you're taking those pills to get a uh, uh, well or to get better because if you're without the pill Chat, your I body love the will conversation start to you're having go into I love that he's explaining Various, this to um, the jury. You, you pain withdrawals and, is um, such a real thing. So I was, I was and bringing on doctors in to explain Roxy, this pain for and the cycle of, of years, opioid addiction uh, will be very interesting years, to see. Like maybe more, I don't know, but um, the key was that I, I, if you take two you will be um, what they call on the knot. You will be that. You'll, you will just drop into sleep. Um, they also uh, say on the knot with heroin. It's interesting so, that he's using um, street language for that. Yes. I, That's I, interesting I, to me. I didn't like being dependent on, on, these, on these pills. I didn't like being dependent on... on um, a, 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 on a drug that would you take only so you wouldn't get withdrawals that's what it becomes it's like a junkie the, the reason why so many uh, well now there's a huge fentanyl problem but but Let's not even. The reason why junkies generally wonder. why they end up overdosing is no. Because this is lax. I'm surprised nobody's objecting. This is again. a. This is and getting you, into speculation. You don't get that. This is wandering. You don't get your first high again. But also, so, 
what do you his do? His attorneys could cut him off because it makes stage. him seem like more of a you drug addict to be talking take more, you take more. about chasing the first high. And and that's so, what makes uh, them, that's what makes things go dark for them. Because the jury thinks you're talking about you, though. Overestimated so, the amount that they. That he might think he's being instructive. I don't think this is helpful. And I think his attorney like should that. interject so, with their next question. Uh, yeah, didn't want that. Because he was trying to say he's not a junkie by explaining so how Jack, junkies act. Do you have act. an estimate as to what year you started taking the... Just the to get a clip of you just described. Amber Heard's face. Um, when, uh, 2000, or excuse me. Uh, I'm going to get back Pirates. to our synced up. Bless you. Did he just say bless you to the judge or the jury? Four, I believe. Pirates four. He said bless no, you to someone Pirates in the courtroom. Four. Rob Marshall directed it. Um... Which also very much those unscripted moments maybe show you kind of the type of person he is, that he's aware of those around him. Was it before you were in a relationship with Miss Heard? Different than Heard screaming at somebody who talked to her on a plane. Very different. And you didn't detox and you detoxed from those opiates during your relationship with Miss Heard. Is that right? Yes. And we saw the nurse's notes about that. Yeah, so they, of course, yes. Yeah, so they must have, yeah, they did come around prior to my meeting, Miss Heard. After you detox from the opiates, have you ever taken any opiates ever again? No, I can't. That's a, it's a no fly zone no. for him. Once you've been bit, You'll be bit again. So no, which is I, fair. With any, I mean, even with he my talked about not liking being addicted. Finger, uh, Good. I, I think that it was like Mot- Motrin eight hundred. Uh, uh, you know, but n- no opiates. No, I have not taken an opiate since, and I won't un- unless I plan on going through the the hell of the, the pure horror of detoxing of coming off those drugs no ask him another question mr depp i'd like to now turn to your relationship with miss hurd um can you please tell There's... the jury how you met miss hurd like 30 mm-hmm. minutes of court time left, and we're just um, getting into their relationship for the day. So he's going to be on direct a bit tomorrow morning, too. In, in around 2008, uh, Hunter Thompson and I were going through some of his manuscripts. Uh, How did you meet Ms. Heard? Well, back in 2008, have been published in Hunter the, Thompson and I were going through manuscripts. I, I found this manuscript in one he of the He always backs up to tell the story, doesn't he? It was doesn't called he? The Rum Diary. And I had heard about it, and I knew it was what they called his long-lost novel. In fact, the only novel he ever wrote. Basically, yes. Um, the jury is told and, and instructed not to. to if it comes out that they did, they can Andrew be removed. Was shocked. Oh my God, that's where it and is. And they violated court and, orders. And uh, so he said, read me some. So I started reading this to him, and he said, this is a movie, you know. We, we, we must produce this together. And, you know, he got all excited about the, the idea of doing that. So we went right into it and we started to um, set up meetings to, uh, to, get, to, to, to get money, uh, financing to develop the project. And uh, we finally ended up getting the money to develop the project and to make the She film. still looks very um, stoic. Hunter... Um, uh, in this from his own um, he looks tired dilemmas she looks stoic in his life um, uh, committed suicide Um, and uh, but I having had long one bot got through I knew every only one of the book, but I knew every Thanks, angle Mons. of the film that he wanted, which was going to be a bit different than the book. And Bruce Robinson 
who was a great writer director directed a film called with neil and i and how to get ahead in advertising was the one director that hunter and i talked about and so i i i went to bruce who was a friend of mine and i ripped him out of retirement because he never wanted to direct another film again also to be fair to amber her him out of retirement she's in a kind of years impossible and, uh, position to write the screenplay she can't be too reactive she can't and, uh, look bored she can't look down uh, and take notes the auditioning process. there's no real good thing for her um, to be except neutral and i think Bruce, that's about as neutral Bruce as we're going to get from her so that's that's a that hunter, about hunter as neutral have very as we can specific get. ideas but he is wandering these characters should be um bruce had been auditioning um his answer is definitely girls, don't get to the point women from for, for the role of Ch uh, chenault in the film and there were the there were this sort of the starlets that that were up and coming and or there were some that were well known and um things of that nature but you know one of the things that hunter was very against was stunt casting that is to say put a bunch of very famous people in a movie and well let them go and and then hope for the money in the, in the end so Bruce had asked me, he said he had been auditioning uh, this this one particular actress. She can. She's Amber allowed to Heard. take notes. Um, I just think that he while that he's testifying, five times, she's not in an easy position to do anything was, without the jury um, reading into it. So she's kind of stuck. If she takes too many notes, they might read into it. He wasn't sure about so. her capabilities um, as an actress. Oh, a little bit of a dig With there. To he wasn't sure of her capabilities as an actress. The film. Interesting. And the character and what, and taking direction and that sort of thing. So he asked me if I would read with her for the, for the film. And I had met, already met a number of actresses and things. And I, and so what I said to Mr. Robinson is I said Bruce I, I I don't if you've if you've auditioned her five times you've seen the best and the worst I suppose so me putting her this this girl in an uncomfortable situation you know saying hey all right let's read this I, I think is a, I think it's a, I think it's a far better idea that we just meet so that i can oh instead of reading s see how she behaves interesting um see how she reacts because that's really all it is reaction behavior and you don't have to push anything else you know um so and they made an appointment uh she she came to my office I took one look at her and I thought, yeah, that's, that's, that's the Chenault that Hunter wants. That's okay. the one. I just, I thought, yeah, she could definitely kill me. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what Hunter wants. <laughs> and so we spoke. Interesting way to characterize it. Sweet as pie, pleasant, again, you know, um, intelligent, literate very good taste uh, um and i felt like if she what i felt and what i told bruce was look when you put some, when you put someone in a situation that, that that they're obviously going to be feel under pressure um it's not the best way to to really to really know what they're capable of and interesting I made suggestions such as um and which i ended up making to ms Hurd. i made suggestions of films that might give her i think so uh, 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 some insight into what what we were looking for in terms of the film which is to say i gave her films like to have and have not um he tried to educate her 
because I, I wanted to, there was something very important that she, I thought, felt she needed to know about stillness as opposed to, you know. Oh, uh, damn it. Going. I thought we were going to get a glimpse of her or, from the other feed. She's learned stillness now. Acting a little too much. We've got stillness down. So I felt like I could. I felt like I could be. Stillness has been a achieved. Traffic cop in that sense. So that. Because if we if we could connect. Then. It would it could work as long as there was truth in her eyes. And as long as there was truth coming out of her uh, uh, dialogue, you know, then it's all in the editing. So I, I, I felt that I could help her with that idea of stillness. Um, and not overacting is what I'm taking. So this. that's where I, that's when I first met Miss Heard. It's a very long answer to how did you how meet? How would you describe your interactions with Miss Heard when you work together oh, on God. Love Diary? That's going to be a very um, long answer. Initially, well, yeah, no, mostly very, very, very few interactions. Um, huh. I remember there was a time I wasn't working that day, but I was producing, you know, one of the producers of the film, <clears throat> and um, it was a scene from the book that that was it was a it was a it was a scene where. Ms. Hurd's character was in a nightclub and I have not seen this movie. I feel at a disadvantage. Um, the locals. I might be watching it this evening. And she's very drunk and everybody's very drunk and she ends up dancing with a few of the local, like one of the local guys and stuff. And then the other local guys start to sort of close in on her. In the book and in the screenplay, as it was written, there was a, a she, there was a required a, a requirement for nudity um, for the part, and uh, I was on set the day that they were shooting that, and as I as I was watching the crowd coming in on her, I realized. You know what? Because I would check on Ms. Hurd and say, "Are you all right? Are you sure you're okay?" Because this is, you know, she was like, "No, no, I'm fine, fine, fine." They but are I letting him go on. The crowd surging in towards her. Way too long. That we didn't have to do. We wouldn't have to do the nudity because if she if she took took her shirt off and she had uh, a red bra on um, and a skirt. Then, if she had a red bra in her hand, when the crowd surged in on her, all she had to do was lift the red bra up out of Catalina, the crowd. Catalina, don't apologize. The jury and is going to be feeling the way you guys are feeling. There's Some no nudity. Might be captivated. Some might be like, "Why the fuck does any of this matter?" Implied. So it's. Because Fair. then she disappears for the character. What were your interactions with her on set? And, Has nothing to do um, with him producing a scene where nudity is implied. She's a wreck when she comes back because so it's fair. Uh, things have happened to her. So but they need to rein. I, I remember him in a bit. Telling Ms. Hurd, "Hey, you don't, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to take your clothes off. You don't have to take your top off. You don't have to. Everything's cool." Um, okay. And she was appreciative. Um, well, that likes personal knowledge, but, and, okay. uh, but, she but seemed other than that, we didn't really um, have much interaction. I saved her boobs. Until, um, we had no interaction. Until there was a, um, a scene where I, I was t I'm, I'm taking a shower, and then she comes into the room, and she walks, opens the shower, and we kiss. He does, Alicia. And, uh, he does just want his side out. But there's a way that, that court needs to so. happen. And a lot of this isn't relevant. It's, it it's was, um, wandering. 
yeah, it, 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 it was as a, it was, it, it, it felt like something, um, it felt like something that I shouldn't be feeling because she had her wife, um, and uh, even though it was a scene, and and, and it she felt had romantic. And, and I had Vanessa, and and we were in relationships. And, um, yeah, Th that's the point that was relevant. We kissed in a scene. It felt your romantic. romantic. Relationship with Miss Hart. It shouldn't have began, been, if if not in that moment. Well, I think there was something direct, in the They have to be open-ended the questions. They can be more narrowly tailored. Um, real. Um, I want her to follow up and ask, does he always feel that so way? that day after... Does it always feel real? ...work, Mr. Uh, had come to my trailer, and I was... Uh, Uh, I was I was uh, I was just sitting there listening to uh, actually old blues stuff, and um, we had a glass of. Oh, wine we're not even to the heart of it yet, spinach muncher. Um, not even to the core. We're just at the beginning. And and um, we kissed. Mari, they do. This could be strategy. Um, to let him endear himself to the jury. It might be, this is the point of and his trial. At that point, we were the, my trailer was the only trailer in the park. And lot. they just want him to get um, everything out and say all of it. She had a mind to stay in the trailer there for a while with me. And I, uh, I think it's an overshare. I think that was a very good idea. I think his attorney should rein him in. Especially since there were about nine teamsters waiting. They don't to want to. The trailer. Um, and then that was that until to, until whenever the uh, we did the first day of the press junket uh, for the Run Diary in Los Angeles uh, two years later, and um, she had she had broken up, I believe, with her wife and. My, uh, for lack of a, no, well, my wife, uh, we weren't married, married, but she was, of course, my wife, Vanessa. Common um, law, I think it counts. They were together 14 we, we plus had, years. Uh, some not so great um, situations, you know. Um, she wanted, she needed, she needed. She was stuck in America. She wanted to go back to France. She wanted to have her life back. She's a, she's a well-known singer there. She oh, no. No, 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 no. You can't play off the court feed, Sky News. Hold on. <laughs> That's not helpful at all. Let's see. To sleep. Um, uh, so, um, yes. I, I, There's a lot of reverb on there. I didn't here. like being dependent on on these bills. I didn't like being dependent. This on, is so far behind. On, um, Hold on. A, on a drug. That is so far behind from where we were. Communicated any time in between. I I don't remember. I remember that there was a oh there was a white dress Alice, it's back that she was really she really was infatuated with that she really loved this dress that she wore in the film the sound here is so much better and uh, so i i went to colleen atwood the costume designer and to bruce and i said do you think we can snag this this white dress that's kind of sweet and send it to uh, to Amber, uh, you know, after she'd wrapped, because she loved the she loved the thing. Um, I remember talking to her. I think then, but uh, briefly, briefly. 
What did you like about Miss Heard when you first started your romantic relationship? She she seemed to be. She seemed to be the. Um, hmm. she, she seemed to be the perfect. A partner, in, in a sense, f in my head, for me, because she, as I said, she, she was, she seemed to be very knowledgeable about old, obscure blues music that I listened to and really liked. Um, she was literate. She was. Uh, she was literate. Sweet, funny. <laughs> okay. Nice. All those things, you know. Um, Not well read. And, and literate she was and from the beginning of our relationship at that time for a good year a year and a half um, she was uh, she was wonderful and and then things just started to uh, change or things started to reveal themselves that's I think is a better way to put it you mentioned earlier in your testimony that Miss Heard would would take off your boots when you would get home from work. What, how, what other types of um, behaviors did you observe in Miss Heard? I if she's early looking in the at the jury. Um, she matches the, the little things that in the courtroom kind of, today. It, it would just the, you'd question. The in, walls a horrible the green color. Line, you know if. Or if it seems to match it. If, uh, if she wanted to go to bed. And Chad, if he's starting to lose you, he might be starting to lose the I jury too. Well, I, it's his I, lawyer's I job to keep an eye on the jury and move the testimony than along. Rather bed and stare at the ceiling, I would say, uh, you know, I'll just watch. I'll be out here watching TV or hanging out. And, and that was just not acceptable. Just not acceptable. It would uh, it would steer up some some rather unusual um, reactions from her. I I, I I didn't understand why I, as a fifty some year old man, was not allowed to go to sleep when I wanted to, uh, as opposed to when she wanted to. It it started out with little things like that. And again, they, they just, uh, <clears throat> they eventually, they just. These things will play like in. Anything. If they're allowed to continue. To then later they, then they testimony, are later to expert testimony. Grow. They're allowed to blossom into whatever they're going to become. Don't speculate. What were you and Miss Hurd's just nicknames for question. each other? Um, Please say I called her Slim. Why is that? I called her Slim um, because of the, the film that I had given her to watch about, for, in terms of stillness was Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart. And uh, I called her Slim and she called me Steve, which was Lauren Bacall's and Humphrey Bogart's nickname, uh, nicknames for each other in the, in the film. That was their what name film? in the film. Um, and it, it, you know, it wasn't, also wasn't lost on me. If Do I, I know what film? Uh, I'm not an old movie buff. It was an age difference, and that, uh, um, my God, when 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 Humphrey age Bogart difference. and Lauren Bacall, that's when they met on that film. He was 45 years old, and she was 19. Um, Can you imagine if that had happened now? They stayed together until Bogart passed away. So, yeah, the 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 the, the there was a kind of a joke to not joke but, but just uh you guys are saying to have yeah, and have not he, thank you all the the fact that i was Chat, you're the, the best. old craggy bogey and she was this um young beautiful woman um beautiful um um creature thank you stunning creature interesting that you called her a creature and not a woman 
When did you first meet Miss Hurd's parents? Almost like she was unreal. I first met Miss Hurd's parents when uh, she was they, in her they, uh, early twenties when they Los met. Angeles. He was in his fifties, I believe. And uh, yeah, and and, and uh, I feel I feel like that I met them. Uh, I think they came to my place, to my to, to, uh, to my studio, and. Um, Rico, this is accurate. Completely he just opposite and, transcribed and the, the trial and make the biography. People page um, was uh, she was an angel. She was an angel, and uh, and uh, I loved her very much. Uh, I, I loved her instantly. He's talking about her we mother. Had a very good relationship. Um, her father. David was the opposite she end of that. He was wall. this outrageous kind of almost like a cartoon cowboy, you know. And he was um, the initial thought. I mean, my initial kind of definition for David would have been rascally, like a rascal, you know. Um, but I... I, I I loved. I mean, I grew to love them both very much, uh, as as well as her. I mean, in uh, this, Lillian, I can't blame her Whitney. for looking bored. It's a lot. And, this um, testimony is kind of wandering. Yes, it it felt like I had been <sighs> welcomed into some sort of family. I had been accepted into this this family, and um, I bet he loved her family. Those relationships stayed. Solid. God, um, that shirt against that court wall is fucking awful, though. Until just a bit after. It's interesting because he's wearing that color green on his tie, too. Went, uh, separated. They're all matching the court wall. How often did you spend time with Miss Hurd's parents during your relationship with Miss Hurd? Quite a lot. Whether we simply D, this is going to be stark I, I to, to the jury when she both, testifies um, because he does have a slower pace. I even want to cut him off. I'm like, oh. so if she testifies at a speech rate like me, sail the it's boat, and, going um, to come off as if she was you know, dominant and wouldn't let him finish her thought, and, uh, which tracks with what the therapist testified to that she had that jackhammer week, style weeks, whatever, and he struggled boat, to talk like, around her. Um, this all so, uh, feels consistent with that. Bit. I don't really care about so him being on a boat with her parents. So I'm talking over it. Um, he spent a lot of time with them. Fantastic. Um, but it feels like every year we would, with uh, this, you're going to see playing out what the therapist um, testified to that he struggled to get a word in. And though a day or two ago, Austin, you might've been like, how did he struggle to get a word in seeing him talk and, contemporaneously? Uh, I, I if she speaks like me or faster, basically set it up you're so going to see that in real time the in the courtroom they could just go there and and um they'd be taken care of and there would be no bill i've so slowed down a lot celebrate. i speak a lot slower than i used to I one of the things we did was <laughs> but no i don't think i'll ever be yes drawly we, we would try to order them car i'll lose so my train of thought they, were, they could drink um no, I, 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 I speak fast because I don't want to lose fine. my sentences in the middle because the ADHD. Now, you mentioned Miss Hurd's sister, Whitney. When did you first meet Whitney? I don't remember exactly when I met Whitney the first time, but I. I've Fair. Move on. Next question. Great. Thanks. No, great. Nope. Nope. Don't remember when I met her the first time. Great. Do you remember where but you I were when, you, when, I, when I first damn met it. Whitney? There was something in. There was something in what I saw of Whitney that was... Also, the blonde hair against the green wall is not ideal for her. Less, much less confident than Amber. Um, much more um, revealing... No, court wall green. Insecurities. Not even a chartreuse. Um, uh, Objection, Your Honor, just foundation. 
Objection, what the fuck? What do you saw in Whitney? I think if you can answer the question. Do you want to ask the question? Again? There's an objection. I, I, I she doesn't even know, know what the question <laughs> is. She doesn't know. Um, Great. How would you describe your relationship with Whitney? I imagine Whitney will be a witness. Great. I mean, fantastic. She was... She her sis. says that she witnessed some of the events that Amber her. will testify I about. Felt, I had always felt something. I'd always felt like Whitney had missed out on something. Same objection. That's his feelings. Okay. That's, not, that's um, where, his feelings. Where was Whitney feeling. living when you, first, when you and Miss Heard first started your relationship? She was living with her... Yes, at least then at least boyfriend, they, Sean Krzyzewski. He's going to have to tighten up his testimony because they're going to start objecting. Was it probably woke up the, the jury same, too. Objection! Everybody where went. Was Ms. Heard living when you first started your relationship. Uh, Miss Form, uh, Miss Miss Heard had informed me that she just moved to. Where's a the new hearsay place objection? On Orange Avenue. It's not hearsay because it's a statement of what a party opponent. But I was just Los waiting Angeles, for them to sorry. make it anyway. And was a Whitney also living in Los Angeles? Whitney was living in Los Angeles, yes, with with uh, Sean Krzyzewski and... Uh, and you guys who are saying he's making me a little sleepy, it might be making the jury feel so sleepy too. It's almost, Whitney, it's um, almost 5 o'clock Eastern. Heard we're in a relationship. They've been doing this oh, for hours. Uh, um, Whitney would... Uh, we're not even Whitney close to his testimony being done. He's got at least another half a day, if not a full day of direct. Such. Uh, what are y'all doing tomorrow? Miss Heard always liked having... Um, People over, you know, for dinner parties and socially shows, you know, social kind of events. Sounds at, like at an her, at her introvert's place. dream to have people over all the time. Note the sarcasm. Have you ever done any drugs with uh, Whitney? Huh. Yes. How often would you do Fairfax, that? Fairfax, Virginia is where they're in court. With Whitney. Yes, with Whitney. Are you counting weed? Or are we not counting weed? It is California. Like, what are we doing? Maybe two, two times, three times, maybe twice, three oh. times. I'm going based on his. Did there come a time when Whitney moved into and the um, fact that they haven't gotten into at the Eastern Columbia any building. of the relevant incidents yes. yet? And and when was that? So I don't remember exactly when it was, but I. I uh, do remember that it was after after she testifies, uh, which will probably be quite a while from now. We're day five into six uh, weeks of trial, and, and so yes, I believe Josh Drew was there already as well. Um, Whitney, <clears throat> Jennifer Hall. There's a wristband situation in the Virginia courthouse, she, but uh, in theory, yes, if you line up and get a wristband, you can. For it is a public trial, but there are How wristbands for COVID precautions. Oh boy, uh, 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 on and off for, uh, <sighs> I suppose, a couple of years. And how much rent did you charge her? Uh, nothing. That was a good, concise answer. Next now question. You said you did drugs a couple yes. times with, with Whitney. Um, Look, what, what drugs were you doing with Whitney? We're, We're moving Whitney on. Whitney and I had uh, smoked weed. Great. Let's move on. Done. Uh, I was just a guessing. Line or two of cocaine. Oh, perfect. Together. That's not the way I thought that was going. Doing coke with the sister-in-law. When did you start I mean, getting right. introduced to Miss Heard's friends after you started your relationship with her? Almost immediately. Well, in fact, immediately. Yeah, immediately. I, I was introduced to. Uh, I'm going to have to tell my sister-in-law to step up the game. Rocky, Drinking almond champagne is not going to cut it after this trial. I'm joking. That would never happen. Um, I was being facetious. Mm -hmm. Who else? That, that this all that comes to mind at the moment. Great. Next question. No, you, you mentioned Rocky. Uh, who is that specifically? Good. This is a Rachel much better Pennington. cadence. It was Mr. Rose Good friend from uh, youth, I suppose. 
So and Raquel is Rocky. You mentioned Brittany Eustace as well. Who is that? Um, this Brittany is a much better Eustace cadence. Was, uh, uh, just one of the gals, you know, she was one of the gals. Seems and, like uh, Amber had a posse around all the time. Quite bubbly and funny and um, real sweet girl, southern southern girl. I haven't seen her um, in. I, I think I think that there I think that something went sideways between. Okay, that's speculation. They're going to object. The girls, because she suddenly just disappeared huh. from the group. When was that? I'm surprised there was no objection on that. Probably, we were probably uh, a year and a half, or two, maybe two. No, interesting. Two two years into the relationship, three years maybe. And I believe you mentioned someone named Io. Who is that? Um, Io, Io Tillett Wright it was a, a friend of Ms. Hurd's from he New knows York all of our friends City, names. who um, was uh, who, who who had identified as a as a, she was born a female if that's the right terminology these days born a female but she what? why are we was, wandering um, into who, okay how io identifies i don't know why we're she, wandering she she had chosen um she at a very young age she had decided that is he trying to explain that io is trans can we just a, she was a male why she identified as a male then io is he can um, we just move on and io seemed to be Again, uh, she was, she was uh, e. very intelligent, very literate, um, kind of a go get them kind of activist type. And uh, I don't know why we need all of she this was writing detail. A book, I remember she was writing a book, um, I O, or he was writing a book. Thank you. Rather, and, um, I, I I had a house on one of my on, on Sweetser. One of the houses there was empty. I don't know why and this is in relevant. Fact, the house that I'd set up to to write in, and uh, when she she had so no he place let Herd's friend uh, go write the book, to stay or, or go, whatever. Wait. I I, I <sighs> called her over and I showed her the house. You know, uh, well, the him. desk was and all the things. And, and uh, so she, I said, write your book, you know, write your book here. So I, uh, so she, she did. Did Io end up living in that house or just working there? No, no, I, Io ended up, uh, no, she, she I think up, uh, they're trying to get to the point. In the house for, of how many of Amber's Somewhere friends lived around because Somewhere Amber is going to say she was isolated from people. how much rent did you charge to Io? And so this is getting to the fact that Amber's <laughs> posse all kind of moved in. And did there also come a time when um, Rocky moved into the penthouses? And all of Amber's building? friends moving in uh, goes Rocky against moved into penthouse two. the fact that Amber and do you recall said she was isolated. Was? Oh no! So Amber that constantly had Sorry. people around. All of her friends that moved in with one. him. That was that was so. not long after uh, Miss Hurd and I started to. Uh, Whitney's the sister. The rest are f the friends. Begin to dress that place up as our residence. So it wasn't very long after that at all that uh, Rocky and Rocky came. Um, I had already. Had my friend Isaac, who, who, who you've met, um, Isaac Perutz. We and, loved and Isaac. I had already. Can we talk about Isaac? Given him a penthouse two. To he stay owned in, all of the and, penthouses. And, uh, I don't think we've talked about how many penthouses he owned. He owned he had, all of the penthouses on the top floor. He would just come. But back this from goes Florida to the fact that he, her friends were uh, living there too. His mom passed away, and I think he had about three dollars in his pocket. So. I, I and that she was not isolated the way she will later say that she was. That's why this is all coming in. Paint and... So he lived there. 
Why did um, Rocky move into the penthouses? Protection uh, Foundation. Mm. <laughs> mm. And hearsay. Mm. Potentially calls for hearsay. I'll overrule that. Why did Rocky move in? Objection. Mm. Go ahead, Mr. Depp. Um, what, what, why did, uh, what is the question sorry, again? What was it again? Yep. Why did Rocky end up moving into the penthouses? Um, well, she, she, she ended up moving into the penthouses. All the champagne is so good. Um, I don't recall. I, I, I believe it was something to do with just not having a, a, a place. And Amber had asked if I would be okay with you know, and it's not here, Rocky so moving in. Amber is a party and opponent. Said, of course. It's a, the, the, the penthouse is empty. That's a lot of penthouses. I, I, I wasn't in the, um, I, I wasn't going to. They addressed how many, though? Be renting them out necessarily anyway you know he wasn't going to rent the bound he didn't want all the people to live on the penthouses he owned friends to come and all of the penthouses on the top floor in fact was initially of the ecb planned out for my sister christy to have an escape from her three thousand grandchildren and uh three thousand uh, the amount of workload that she had how taken on many did you own though How long did Miss Pennington end up staying in the penthouses? Thank you. Five. Five penthouses. I, Longer I, than I did. And how much Thank rent you. did you charge to Miss Pennington? Nothing. So Rocky is Raquel. Did anyone Pennington. live with Miss Pennington in the penthouses? And yes. again, this goes to Amber's her friends all moving fiance, in. Her boyfriend and fiance, Josh Drew. Um, and then at a certain point, uh, I learned that there was so Amber had uh, everyone a, around another her. female living there. Who I, I wasn't sure who that was. I didn't know who that was. It was it because it was a there was it, there were two bedrooms, and so she had invited a friend to move in. But I I, I met that person very briefly a while after they had already been living there. I made a good breaking yeah. point. I think I this is a good sure. stopping okay. point. Oh, we're done for the day. It's five o'clock, so we'll go ahead and break for the evening. Again, did not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? We'll and that is the end of day right. five. You. Your excuse for the day. Thank you. That's a tight wrap up. I don't know if Amber Heard and her attorney coordinated the kind of black and white, but that shirt's been looking green, but that could just be the wall of the courtroom and the um, the cameras in the courtroom. We've got a lot of questions to talk about. It looks like court's going to probably be resuming at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, but the court will instruct Johnny Depp what time she wants him back. And again, sir, since you're in the middle of your testimony, you did not discuss your testimony with anybody to include your attorneys this evening. Okay. All right. You can, you can stand down. Okay. Thank stand you. down. All right. Is there any other matters for this evening? Ooh, briefly. Sure. What are we doing? Please do it on the mic. Damn it. Do it on the mic. Do it on the mic. We want to know what your motions are. So it looks like they approached regarding approached regarding something, but we don't know what. I'm going to leave the feed up until we hear that the court's wrapped for the end of the day. Um, because when the court wraps for the end of the day, they will probably resume at uh, 10 a.m. tomorrow. I think this is his security guy who testified yesterday and since he, he's been released as a witness he's allowed to stay in the courthouse because he's been released so why cut him off mid-testimony because it is five o'clock and court is done court reporters the court reporter has been at this all day the jury's only kept through 5 p.m the bailiffs and everybody's kept through 5 p.m so court does not keep going court generally has a pretty hard stop and that's what we're saying yeah that is the security guard it looks like the same security guard. I could be wrong. That testified. Um, but that looks like security in any matter. People are starting to exit the courtroom. These are members of the public back here. I want to see what the court says. Um, people look kind of geeked. Like we see a lot of like excitedness back here pointing at Johnny Depp. 
and and seeing him and looking at him um, and excited to see him. So it definitely seems like he has fans in the courtroom as we're seeing today. So I'm just going to keep this feed up to watch because I'm very curious how the public is reacting to this testimony, but we're definitely seeing some Johnny Depp fans in court. Um, you saw some standing up and waving. So until the court wraps for the day, I am going to stay live. We are, I'm going to answer questions and super chats for a little while longer. Our mods have been here all day. So a huge thank you to them. We will resume tomorrow for his testimony. We are doing, we're doing the depth testimony. We're doing the thing. We're just doing the thing. But yes, I see the audience definitely has hearts popping over their head. Let's see if any of the other feeds have what's going on up at the bench. I'm actually a little more interested in what's going on here. No, Court TV is already cut for the day. So I'm just going to leave it on this feed from Sky News and uh, and then we'll go from there. So a huge thank you to the mods. But yes, you can see this group back here is just kind of craning to get a look at Johnny Depp as he is talking to one of the plethora of lawyers on his team. Um, this is this whole front row is legal team. Um, that could be lawyers, that could be legal researchers, that could be paralegals, et cetera, et cetera. But we definitely have a view that the court is not done. I really want to know what they're talking about up at the bench. But you can see the, the women back here going, oh, my God. Um, I could look. I don't need to know how to lip read to see the oh, my God. So we've got a live feed right. audio back into court. Means court's done for the day. They're going to excuse the judge. The audio just cut out of the court. So that's not helpful. We had audio and now we don't, but court days resuming. There we go. They're being walked out through the back. Um, court days resuming, I assume at 10 a.m. I wonder if Depp is exiting through the back as well or if he's exiting out the front, but it definitely seems like he has a bit more of a fan club in the courtroom at this point. So with that, I'm going to start getting to some of the super chats. Um, so anyway, what, how are you guys chat? His, um, his testimony was definitely a bit wandering just woo. It was, a. Uh, it was wandering. I wonder if they're doing that too. Oh, I recognize this woman back here from TikTok. Oh, he's going out the back as well. Did you see him thank the court reporter? Him leaning over and thank the court reporter and thanking the court clerk? I think that's very fair. If they pan back, there is somebody in the audience who I recognize doing um, doing coverage on this case on TikTok, um, who's also a podcaster. All right. So 10 a.m. tomorrow, let's do some questions. Ah, that's the court feed. Sorry, y'all. Did, did you see me reaching to pull this out of my ear? That was the court feed. Goodbye, court feed. Fuck off. Stop coming. Stop coming for us. Stop coming for us. Um, we're going to end our poll to see what you guys think. See how long this testimony is going to take. Woo! Y'all, he seems to um, absolutely be giving some deference and some um, respect to the people around him, but I don't get the sense that that's a show. Um, when somebody sneezed, he said, excuse you, I or or bless you. I get the sense that that's genuine. I get the sense that that's how, um, that that's how he interacts on set and what have you too. So that was a long day of testimony. Let's get to super chats and questions. And then I am going to wrap so that we can prep for tomorrow because I will be back until we are done with depth testimony, which, wow, we could be in for some really long days. We could be in for some long days. So um, it looks like all of her friends lived rent free, all of them. Question, was it, oh, I should swoop into questions. I'm going to swoop into questions. We're doing questions and super chats. Swoop. It, was it a strategy to let him go on and on? I'm not, I, I'm sure there was some type of strategy to this. There might be also some deference of not wanting to step on his toes, but it did wander a bit. But 
it's going to have to tighten up, especially as they get to cross-examination, or he's going to start fighting back and forth with the defense attorney, which isn't going to be good either. Um, I don't think the attorney was doing a bad job. I think some of the letting him go um, might be to show the way he expresses himself to juxtapose them to Amber Heard. Uh, they've gotten to see Amber Heard's deposition. Some of them have taken Amber Heard's deposition. We've They've seen all of the depositions from the therapists, the doctors that are testifying, the experts that are testifying. This might be to allow him to be a stark contrast to Heard, who, again, their marital counselor said had a jackhammer style of communication. His communication style is very deliberate, very slow, and a bit wandering. So it might be to allow the jury to perceive where these difficulties are coming in later and to also get a sense of what his text messaging is like and the way that he does things when he texts. It might be um, for all of that. So there might be strategy to it. So, um, what is your feeling of which attorney will cross him? I think it is Amber Heard's male attorney that did the first part of the opening because he was the one objecting. And generally, the attorney that's objecting is the one that's going to be doing the cross. You don't you don't switch kind of switch with that. So, how long do you think the testimony will take per the poll? Two days is at 37%. A full day is at 32%. So a full day means we would be done by lunch tomorrow. I don't think that's going to happen. Longer than two days, 19%. A half a day, 10%. I think two to two and a half days is very realistic at this point. We'll see how this goes tomorrow. They did a full half day of testimony today and have not gotten into any of the salient incidences um, that they need to talk about. And then Cross is going to be long. So yeah, it's going to be long. So let's get into some super chats and questions. Thank you guys for being here. I should say, if you are new here, I have a new episode of the podcast out tomorrow on your favorite audio apps. The video will be up at some point tomorrow, the next day. It just depends on how much we stream. Um, you can go ahead and like, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you being here. It supports the channel. And when we go to subscriber chat, it keeps the bots away. Sandy said a comment from another stream as is this in part JD's Washington post answer. Yes, this is his answer to all of it that, and that it might also be part of letting him go. This is him telling his side of the story. It's like Johnny Depp, my side, this is his side of the story questions. If he wins, does her counter case get thrown out? Lulu, this is a great question. Her counter, her cross suit is going to be heard in this suit as well. So, they're going to hear the jury's going to decide both. So if the jury decides she was lying, then the statement that it's a hoax necessarily is, is true. So it's going to come down to how the jury decides. Thank you for the super sticker. Oh my God. These shoes I'm living, I'm living for everything. The clouds, the rainbow platform. I'm living for all of that. Um, love. Barry question. Can they use the Jerry judge's deposition from before he died? They will have to agree to it, but legally it can come in. He's an unavailable witness. If they have a video deposition, they can use it um, the way they've used the other ones. Those are also unavailable witnesses for different reasons. Um, are there two trials? I think I answered this earlier. It is two. It's a suit and a countersuit all in the same trial. And then there are two parts. So Depp's case in chief, Heard's case in chief, and both of them having kind of a rebuttal. T. Hamilton, thank you, Emily, for all you do. Will both cases go to the jury at the same time? Yes. Can Amber withdraw her case to avoid testifying? No, not at this point. Um, a, she's not going to withdraw her case. B, they can still call her to testify. So, no, I think she wants to testify. I think she wants to tell her story more. Johnny appears to be a the lady that cleans my toilets type of celebrity. Oh, Johnny appears to not be the lady that cleans my toilets type of celebrity. Yeah, not not um, in the Rachel Hollis variety. He knows his people by name. His team is his family and his circle. I'm getting that sense too, and I haven't really heard anything different about him. <clears throat> Thomas, hello. I assume this established um, that his staff stayed with him through things, how he can recall the past, and how he's had to balance personal life, professional life, 
I think a lot of the stuff about his team is to establish how much they were around. So when would hurt have had injuries on her that they wouldn't have seen because of how many people were around all the time. So I think that's a big part of it. And it goes to his recollection too. Yes. Thank you guys for the super stickers. Um, I jinkies. It is hard. I always ask people not to speculate. He's going to tell us he's on the stand. Now he's going to tell us about his life. So we are definitely going to hear it. Have you seen the TikTok of his security trying to take away the teddy bear a fan gave him? He smacked the security guard's hand away. He's so wholesome. I haven't seen it, but I will go look for it. He seems to very much um, care about the public. And he was talking about it a little bit when he said, you know, people are curious and they want to get to know you. <clears throat> and I thought that was very sweet. What is the funniest thing you've seen someone do to occupy their hands during trial? I need to keep my hands occupied to listen. Well, I use, I, I see people writing normally. Um, I use this thing. This is, I have no idea what it's called. I got it on Amazon, kind of like a fidget spinner, but not. So I use this to wiggle. Um, but normally note taking. However, I did not often watch because when you're sitting at council table, I did not often see what the defendant was doing because it was like me and a detective and then defense attorneys, then the defendant. So I couldn't see them. I couldn't see what was going on behind me in the gallery. And then the jurors, when they were writing, I thought they were taking notes, but some of them might be doodling and things like that because that also keeps people um, engaged. But me, me, reality, no questions. Just, oh my God, I can't keep my eyes off this, Emily. It's wild. I just found out about the poop. We're going to get to the poop. The, the poop on the bed of it all is going to come up maybe tomorrow. Um, hopelessly dope said he is awfully charming. I'm so scared what will come out from both sides. It's going to be damaging no matter what. This is bad for everyone. I worry that this trial is going to be mutually assured destruction, but we will see. I mean, we're going to get into cross-examination. Who knows how long I think this there, the court doesn't have court on Friday. This could very realistically take the rest of the week. Okay. Have you ever gotten bored during a witness's answer and realized I zoned out? I have no idea what they just said. Um, rarely, but it can happen. And I think it was one of my law school professors. It's kind of an old, old hat wisdom. If you fall asleep at council table, the first thing you say is I object. If you lose your place at council table, the first thing you say is I object. Um, so there's, there's some kind of old hat about like, I object. <laughs> But um, things can get boring. They can. The thing with being the prosecutor is normally I was the one running witnesses. Defense attorney, defense very rarely has that many witnesses. And if it's the defendant testifying, it's fascinating. So there's no nodding off. And then when it's your own witnesses, you have to ask the question. So you're at least standing up. So there's that. <clears throat> um, some of y'all have never seen a Johnny Depp interview nor been in that court hot seat. And it shows it's hard to be a witness. I I think that his attorney did him a disservice by letting him wander, but that might be part of their strategy. Um, reality with Krista Marie. I forgot to thank you for all you do and for this coverage. You're welcome. That is what I'm here for. We're just, we're having a watch party together to talk about this stuff. Is it possible that the jury could believe that the relationship was mutually abusive, but still fine in Johnny's favor due to those living in glass houses shouldn't throw stones? Um, sorry if it's a dumb question. It's not a dumb question, but it is defamation. So if they find that Amber Heard is a victim in some ways because it's mutually abusive, then they can find def defamation. If they find that her characterization of being a victim is unfair or an unfair characterization, then they might not find for her. It's really going to boil down to what they think and to how you define victim and how you look at this article. We're going to look at the article real quick. Let me pull it up real fast. Um, everything, all of my, all of my things have gone. Everything's tired. Let me pull up this article real quick because we need to talk about the statements. And also I do have a deep dive episode or a case brief episode about this. that might be helpful, but let me pull up the sun UK um, article. I have a copy of the the statements that matter and it's not very long. So bear with me while we just have this conversation. Well, we're here to have this conversation. I don't know why I'm saying bear with me. We're here to have this conversation. Um, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. 
that has to change. So that's part of what they're saying is the problem. But she did speak up. So is that false? Because she did speak up. So is that defamatory? But this is part of it. Two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. So how they characterize that is going to be one of the turning points of this trial. Did she become a public figure representing domestic abuse when she got a domestic violence restraining order? Yes. So she got a restraining order. She became a public figure representing domestic abuse. Is that true or is that false? So when you're looking at this statement, it's going to be, well, did it or didn't it? And this is how granularly they're going to start to pulse parse this. Um, she talked about being harassed and sexually assaulted from the time she was in college age. And then she talks about being blacklisted and institutions protecting men of abuse. And that's interesting um, how institutions protect men accused of accused of abuse. Did she accuse him of abuse? Yes, she did. But is she a public figure reprimand, uh, representing domestic abuse? Is she a victim? Is this a victim of debt? Or um, is this, you know, from the time she was in college? So these are the things the jury's going to have to parse talking about um, men accused of abuse. Was he or, or was he not? He was accused of abuse. So is that defamatory if it's true? She accused him. It doesn't mean he's abusive. So these are the statements that the jury's going to have to parse, and some of it will be hard for them. And so I can see them throwing out all of it versus keeping some of it first, if that makes sense. Let's get to a few more questions. Um, CJ Raymond said, this is consistent with every interview I've seen of him. Hope they get something to help bring his coping skills to light, fidgeting, drawing, writing. They may do it here or they may do it with another witness. So it just depends. Um, so it just depends. I'm going to look at poll. Is it poo or poop? <laughs> that's, that's a fair question. That's a very fair question. Is it poo or is it poop? I think it's poop on the bed. Um, and Laura S that's fair too. She did still get to work. Um, so this is, this is why this case is difficult. And also she might now be a public figure representing domestic abuse, but not as a victim. So again, it's going to be, it's going to be hard. Um, does the jury have to be unanimous? No, they do not. They do not have to be unanimous. It has to be more. And I think their ultimate number that they deliberate with is seven. So it would probably be five um, that need to need to agree. But no, it's a civil case. It does not have to be unanimous. Will the rambling possibly not just bore the jury, but negatively affect him by helping her? It's, it's always possible. It's a risk that he runs and it's something they're going to have to talk about. So. It is a risk that he runs. It's, but it's also a risk that they just tune out and they're not hearing any points that he's making. But he didn't make a ton of points today. He talked about his childhood. I think that was probably the most powerful part. How they met, eh. Once they got into all her friends living there, they're going to absolutely t circle back to that in closing because Amber is going to say she was isolated and she had nowhere to turn to. And it's going to be like, woman, he was there with your posse. All of your squad was around you and him. How do you say you have no one? That'll come back around in closing. So anyway, um, let's see. Um, oh my God, I mentioned to you in another chat that cross could be harder because of doors open and they mentioned and mentioned I got it from watching you, but they deleted my comment. Uh, it, you know, some chat, it depends on where you're watching, but sometimes other chats don't want it see it as promoting other channels. So it just depends on the channel, but no worries. We, um, no worries about that. So don't worry. I think they opened some doors on cross for sure. Um, C Neil said, my father's family's from Eastern Kentucky and he's not exaggerating. It's the kind of poor that makes other poor people realize they're not that poor. I mean, that's definitely the childhood that he described growing up. 
Um, Jay Rashid Banks said if Dakota Johnson or other co-stars is Dakota Johnson or other co-stars on schedule to testify, I recall Dakota on a press junket of Depp showing his hand. Um, I have not seen her on the witness list at all. Can Vanessa be called to testify even if she's not on the list? No. Elaine gave the impression that she was abused. Johnny's legal team has to counter this. If she's not on the list, if she's not been subpoenaed, she cannot be made to testify. They wouldn't have done depositions. And so, no, if she has not already been kind of deposed and vetted, you can't just spring in witnesses unless it's for very narrow types of impeachment. And that's unlikely here. KD said, we're tra uh, recalling trauma can fight, flight, freeze, and can hyper arousal, stop or slowed speech, thinking, et cetera. Google window of tolerance. Thank you for the note to the greater and wider chat. We will see an expert testifying about um, abusive relationships later on in this trial. Whimsical says his humility is so his humility is so endearing and sounds extremely sincere. Good, sensitive human is the vibe I get from him. Thank you for the great insights. You're welcome. And I'm sure some on the jury will take that away too. And they will also, the jury will watch the way he interacts in the courtroom when they can. So they will also form their own opinions about body language, about interactions, about how he interacts with his legal team, how she interacts with her legal team. All of it will matter. Just curious, have any other Depp's partners said that he was abusive? Uh, not that I've seen, but I have not dug into, I am not an investigative journalist. I have not dug into all of that. I've been looking solely at the court documents in this. There are plenty of others that dig into all of it, but not that I recall specifically. And also me done, not done in opening his legal team said no other partner and no one else has accused him. I think it was no other woman has accused him of abuse there was an objection during his attorney's opening statement that went up to the judge and they won that objection and brought it up multiple times in opening that no other woman has accused him of abuse. So that did come up. So yes. Um, Jersey, couldn't they get Disney to testify as to why they fired Depp? I haven't seen executives on that. I think the fact that he was fired is going to be enough. I also think Disney would be hesitant because they don't want to get sued for wrongful termination if this turns out to be false. Thoughts on if his thoughts on his career if he wins public opinion. I think if he wins over the court of public opinion, there's room for his career to bounce back. We will just have to see. I don't work in Hollywood, so I don't know how much done is done. We've seen people bounce back from other things. Um but a lot, mostly drugs and alcohol, not so much this. Question, how do they find a fair uh, jury in such a high profile case? So lots of high profile cases, it, you'd be amazed. People aren't always interested in the same things that we're interested in. So you will find, well, we saw, I can't wait to see what happened with the Kardashian case today, um, where you had jurors yesterday coming and going, I can't be fair. I hate them. But you will get people who just don't pay that much attention, who are like, yeah, I've seen a movie or two. I don't care about celebrity culture. This isn't my thing. Pop culture isn't my vibe. I mean, we don't know her. We don't know her on this channel. We don't know the pop culture is not my vibe. But there's plenty of people who just generally aren't interested in celebrities and their drama. And, and that could be, you know, the makeup of this jury. So I think you're not going to find anyone who's not aware of Johnny Depp, but people who aren't really aware of all of this, I think wouldn't be too hard to find. They did it in a day, but they also used uh, questionnaires to vet people beforehand. How can Amber Heard counter for what Johnny Depp's lawyer said? I mean, he did not say it. Oh, how can Amber Heard counter sue for what Johnny Depp's lawyer said, even though he didn't say it? Cause her counter suit is based on his prior lawyers statements about this being a hoax. It's because he was working as an agent of Johnny Depp at the time. There was a lot of pretrial litigation on that, but he was an agent and they found that this was not in the furtherance of court because he was talking to different magazines and not saying the case will show, this will show, saying this is a hoax and things like that. So that is how. Question, is his previous lawyer being sued for defamation too? No. How was Johnny Depp sued for what a lawyer said? Because he was his agent. Why is there no litigation privilege at the time? So litigation privilege doesn't extend to everything. It extends to things in furtherance of litigation. And the court in this case 
um, as best as I recall, found that those the particular statements were not in the furtherance of litigation made to GQ and others saying that her statements were a hoax. These are not press releases given. These are not things said in court documents. These are not things said in direct relation to court. So that is why. Hopefully that answers it. Um, when will you cover the Kardashian-Jenner Black China lawsuit? Um, also, is there an amount for this case with Heard and Johnny from either side? Johnny Depp is seeking $50 million. Amber Heard is seeking $100 million. When will I cover Black China and Amber uh, the Kardashian-Jenners as I have time? Um, and I've been trying to do daily roundups on the Quick Bits channel, which will be in the chat and elsewhere. So that. Um, so let's see, I'm Tia A said Amber went to Disney and Warner brothers. I mean, it happened within days of this account coming out. I don't really care about the Kardashians. I feel they often have a lot of drama, but Depp has not been accused of abuse before, but heard has, which is interesting. Um, did the Kardashians try to settle out of court this weekend? China refused. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to resolve it before it went to trial. They're going to lose a lot of time and money um, being in court. And it said there, it seems that there was insanity um, in that case today too, if black China's mom is getting kicked out of the courtroom and you, I don't know if they finished jury selection or not. I will check in with that after I'm done with this, after we decompress following Johnny Depp's testimony is kind of the first, um, the first step. That is not what I was trying to pull up. I was trying, I saw an Amica cream. There we go. And the chat jumped as I was like clicking it. Nightbot, I'm not trying to highlight you, boo. You're not stealing the show. I'm genuinely thinking of making a moisturized called Amica cream and selling it. <laughs> oh, I mean, Amica cream. What's the memes? The memes are wonderful. Question Do you think that Depp's team should bring up the fact that Heard sued Depp? For what his lawyer said and not the lawyer um, as her being vindictive, I'm sure they will argue it in closing a bit. Sorry if this is a silly question. Hey, Charlie, no silly questions. And your hair is fucking fabulous. So we're going to chat. Um, do the jurors know how much they have requested with their suits? No. Amber wanting double Shirley makes her sus to the jury. The jury doesn't know. Jury doesn't know. Jury doesn't know. Jury doesn't know. Don't tell jury. Sorry. I had a whole moment. Um, Johnny doesn't know. Johnny doesn't know. If you know, you know. But Johnny doesn't know. Don't tell Johnny. Um, they don't know. They will find liability. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> We're getting to the end of the day. They will find liability first and then go on to find amounts if it's appropriate to get to there. So the jury can come back with a verdict on liability. Who's responsible for what was their defamation or not. And if damages are to be awarded, then they will hear the damages part and then they will award damages. So that's not going to come up in this part other than they both have to show some damage to show the defamation because it has to cause damage, but they're not going to get into the specifics of how much they've lost going forward and things like that until they get to the damages part of the trial. So that's a good question. Question. Do lawyers make a jurors now or would they be yeeted by the lawyers selecting jurors? Yes. I did not ever care for having, <laughs> I did not ever care for having lawyers on my jury. Um, they can, Sometimes we take over a room and that's not what you want. You don't want that person directing your, directing your channel. So that, that, that Emily, do you feel that based on his testimony that he will start to uh, be offered more roles again? I am going to withhold my thoughts until the end. Cause I haven't processed my thoughts yet. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Once we get to the end of this, I will have a better sense. We're just at the part of the case that's good for him. We haven't gotten to all of it, and the, it will get uglier. There is ugliness on both sides here. Um, Mick McAllany, M. McAllany, is Amber in so deep she has to follow the lie? That's going to be their argument. I mean, we saw Sherry Papini plead guilty yesterday because she couldn't follow the lie anymore, but that's what his team's going to say. She's going to say it's the truth. 
question, did he get to look up dates earlier in the process? Oh, I paused this because I wanted to talk about it more in depth, or I'd save this to talk about it more in depth. They would have gone through all of this when gathering evidence and during the discovery phase. He and his team would have been over the incidents that she's alleging from the UK trial, the 14 different incidents. They would have been over it and over it and over it. Emails, text messages, me banging my mic around, just banging it all around. Emails and text messages and photos and going through everything they can to pin down dates and times and recollections. When did you get on planes? When were you in Australia? Where were you here going through the calendar? This is a years long process, but keeping that all in your brain to testify can be difficult. Yes, I've already answered why it's not in California. Depp's team sued in Virginia and fought very hard to keep it there. The Washington Post's printing presses and some of their servers are in Washington or sorry, are in Virginia, which is why Virginia is the proper, is a proper venue. California also could have been a proper venue. Um, Courtney said, I'm so embarrassed that I'm struggling to really focus on what he's saying. Bring me back, Johnny. There were parts of it that wandered. There were parts of it that wandered. Don't, don't be embarrassed at all. Janice said, my friend's daughter was Cinderella at Disneyland and got to spend a day in character with Depp and his daughter. She said he was just a dad that day and she was in all his photos and videos that day. That sounds like a fantastic day. And it seems to be something that he really wanted was just to be dad. Does his apology help his case at all? Shows growth of his mindset. Um, does him apologizing for the offensiveness of his text? I think it shows that he's embarrassed. I mean, it's a human thing, right? It, humans sometimes say really awful shit when they're angry, say mean shit when they're angry. And we can see that he sees everything as an artistic venture. Like the way we craft words is very interesting to him. And so it gives some context around his texts. I think they will come back to the text messages to talk about it more. Um, they're not cutting him off because it seems it's hard for him to find his voice. I think they're giving him space to speak and not feel rushed. V a very, very fair um, comment on that. It will be interesting to see how he responds to Amber Heard's aggressive lawyer. I hope they have the male lawyer do cross, but they will have to rein him in a bit. Fred came in and just yeeted himself. Oh, there you go. Right back. Fred's like, I'm back, bitches. I'm back. I'm ready. LK said late, but a following Johnny Depp leaving equals common gaslighting around mentally ill victim to shift blame using illness can cause suicidal ideation. Uh, bipolar mortality rate is 11 to 20%. I have no knowledge of any of those statistics or facts, but it does seem that based on the testimony we have seen in court that she did um, go to physical levels to make him stay when he was trying to um, disconnect and disengage. So he would try to disengage and she would follow him around and continue to fight. Another friendly reminder that you're not weak for needing to take a break if this is triggering. Frankie, a great reminder. And yes, a lot of the testimony today was hard. Why isn't the jury sequestered? It's six weeks long. It would be very expensive to sequester the jury. They have to tell the jury to avoid coverage of the trial and, you know, go watch Housewives on Hulu. <laughs> you you go watch sports. Just if the news coverage comes on on this, turn it off. Do not seek it out. Do not go looking for it, which means that you can't really be on TikTok and Twitter and things. Um, I feel like this is a good appeal to the jury's emotions. Yes, he could be connecting to many of them. Yes, but if he wanders too long, he will bore them and that's not good either. Um, Lisa said, as a recovering addict of an addict mother, this absolutely breaks me. It's truth. It Him talking about the beginning of his addiction was tremendously sad. It was tremendously sad. Um, Narco ASA said he used to go to the children's hospital dressed as Jack Sparrow a lot too. That stopped slash slowed. Losing that role has impacted him drastically in many ways, not just financially. Sad on many levels. It is. It is. Um, you know, he almost has a type of stutter. I think he does actually have a stutter. I think that is when he was talking about his characters being able to speak a million miles a minute, but he can't. Um, that's what I took away from that. Seychelles said, I'm currently experiencing delayed, um, paraplegia broke my back at 14 now at 38. I'm just now becoming paraplegic. I'm sorry to hear it. Um, that has got to be very, very challenging back stuff. Back stuff is hard. Um, Melissa said, I'm on oxycodone for about six years for back pain. Back pain is real. And I hate being on meds rather take Tylenol back pain can be just life destroying. So I hear you. Um, 
soulless, so soulless. It's going to get worse as the day goes on. Um, SOS, illus. <laughs> We're just Emily. Can you pronounce things late in the day? No. Um, wonder if she doesn't want to cut him off because he was always cut off. That again, a very, very fair point, and it might be. But her job as the attorney is to kind of rein in this testimony so he's not kind of wandering out. There were a few things that he talked about that I'm like, some of those things are going to open a door. Um, however, it's all going to be out there anyway, so it might not really matter all that much. Um, I get the feeling he wants to be understood. CJ, I absolutely get that feeling too. I get his style. I speak in stories. Some hate it. I mean, it's hard with testimony, but it was nice that the defense wasn't constantly trying to cut him off. Um, Norma said, I worked on Rum Diary, read book. I feel Johnny merged life and art. In the book, the Chenault was a femme fatale. He played Hunter before in films. Thank you for that insight. It's always appreciated. Um, Sarah said, I'm getting the purple refresh tomorrow, so I'll be watching. Fan will be here. <laughs> It was just revealed Dep2 has ADHD, right? I can get in this rambling flow, unfortunately, when I'm overwhelmed and my thoughts are hard to unjumble. I don't know about that. It wouldn't, I mean, nothing would surprise me, but it wouldn't surprise me because I can also be overly verbose when I get nervous. Um, I'm almost out of water. I was wondering, but it shows his chillness and how giving he is. How could how he could be taken advantage of if he can't keep up. Maybe. Um, I, I get the sense he was kind of mesmerized by Amber Heard. Uh, Dooley said, it says something to me that the lawyers are comfortable with letting him go because he has nothing to hide speaks of his pursuit of truth. That's a really good perspective. Um, that's a very, very good perspective. And it is possible. Like, why do we need to rein him in? It's all coming out. Like it's all coming out. The shit's on the bed. It's all coming out. Just let it go. Um, if JD wins, can Amber appeal? Yes. Or vice versa? Yes. Appeals can happen. Whether they will go anywhere, we don't know, but appeals can happen. Huge thank you to the mod squad. Thank you, Miss Opinionated. Seychelles Green, he's from Kentucky. Kentucky and speak slow. It's endearing and frustrating. Don't start a combo unless you've got time to talk. I feel that way around Middle Tennessee too. Start a conversation if you have a minute to chat. My friend's like, it's just sweet tea time. You just, you just take your time. You just take your time. Question, what evidence or possibly type did she have to present to obtain that restraining order? Can a restraining order be obtained by allegation alone? Um, she would have had to have presented a little bit more. They, Depside has argued that this was an ex parte, so he didn't have a chance to, um, to combat it. So uh, photos of bruising, things like that, and her story was a temporary restraining order, and then it was withdrawn when. Um, when they settled the divorce stuff, but he did not appear to, um, to come to present his side on it or try to get it denied, which is interesting question. If the jury found them both to be abusive, how will the lawsuits play out? The jury could find that no one defamed anyone and just be like, nobody's liable for any of this. Y'all go away. That's possible. Not liable. Um, English three muffin. What do you think each side will be looking for? Um, in, disqualifying from the jury. I find myself relating personally to much of his testimony. I have not seen the jury questionnaire. That would really help seeing the jury questionnaire to know kind of what they were looking for or not looking for. I think anyone that has had a tremendous, a amount of experience with addiction might be somebody that's, um, that's yeeted. I think they want someone who can, they want someone who can listen. I also think they want someone who's not been in a domestic violence relationship but that's not necessary, you know? Um, so let's see. Emily, when you have experienced childhood neglect and abuse, these people tend to over explain. I did it for decades. I, it might be true too. Um, he's trying to be, it, he's definitely trying to be heard. Um, he's trying to be heard. And that's part of what this is about. Does Amber have to testify? Yes. Yes, she absolutely does. Um, her case can't go forward without her testifying, and Depside can call her to testify. She will testify. Can a jury find both of them defaming each other? I don't think so, and here's why. Depp's allegations of defamation come from 
Hurd's statement in the Washington Post article about domestic abuse. The defamation that Hurd is suing for comes from that being called false and that being called a lie. So if the jury finds that Hurd's defamation in the op-ed is actually defamatory, then Depp's defamation of saying that her story is a lie is not going to be defamatory because logically they necessarily would have said, well, Hurd's lying. So if they find that Hurd's lying, then it's defamatory as to Depp, but then not defamatory to call her a liar, essentially. But if it goes the other way and they find that Hurd's not defamatory, they could say, well, if we split hairs on this, um, I could see them splitting hairs on this and being like, well, she did speak out. She did become a public figure representing domestic abuse, but also those, she did do those narrow things. So that's not defamatory to Depp. She did become a public figure representing domestic violence. So that's not defamatory, but I could also see a jury saying, okay, but him calling it a hoax is also not defamatory because there's also things in here that she's lied about. So I could see them finding no defamation on either side. But if they find something defamatory, the two things are logically inconsistent. Both of those defamations can't be true, if that makes sense. Um, so unrelated, but will you be sharing the work you are doing um, on the Beast for Health Back Improvement? Thank you. I've shared some on Instagram. I don't always know how much to share because I I have I only have my own experience and what I'm trying to do with the beast, but um I I share that stuff in my Instagram stories mostly. So yes. So let's see. Um I'm gonna do one more and then I oh it's 445. I'm gonna wrap up and go see the kiddos. Um, how sad this legacy legacy role with pirates was cut short because of her op-ed. He put in so much work for that role. I mean, I wanted to see what pirate six was too. We like the pirates movies. So it will be very interesting to see how that goes. Me. One more question. Also me. One more question. If Hurd's lawyers are too harsh or cut off Johnny, will it hurt their case? It could hurt the way that the jury perceives them and that can hurt them. And with that, y'all, we have done so much um today i will be back tomorrow we have just we have just um i want to make sure i got all of i think i got all the super chats all right we have had such a lovely day together law nerds and new law nerds welcome i see you guys subscribing thank you for joining us thank you for liking and subscribing thank you for following along the podcast is the emily show i'm at the emily d baker all over the social medias I will be back tomorrow morning. I am exhausted. I'm sure you are too. It is time to wrap this stream and see you tomorrow. Mods, thank you. We will be on subscriber modes because our mods will need to switch in and out. It's a lot. It's a lot covering a trial like this, but we're going to do it. We've got it. Maybe they'll take a two hour lunch tomorrow. And if they do, so will we. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a law nerd. Even the new law nerds, your law nerds. We love you, your family. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.